Good evening. It is Wednesday, September 18, 2024, and welcome to the Town of Carmel Town Board. Uh, tonight is a uh, voting meeting followed by a work session. Uh, we are going to start with a public hearing tonight. I call this meeting to order, and if everyone please rise, face the flag. Councilman Kearns will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you. If our town clerk, Alice Daly, would please do a roll call attendance. Councilman Kearns? Present. Councilman McDonough? Here. Councilman Lombardi? Here. Supervisor Kazari? Here. Now, before we open the public hearing, uh, our representative from Nelson Pope, Bonnie Franson, will do a short presentation about the master plan. Can you all hear me? Yes? All right. So good evening, everyone. My name is Bonnie Franson. I'm a partner with Nelson Pope and Voorhees. Uh, we've been planning in the Hudson Valley for over 30 years. And uh, this presentation is about a culmination of a comprehensive planning process and rezoning process that the town is going through. So I'm going to kind of breeze quickly through the comprehensive plan process slides because this is the second public hearing on this. Um, but I am going to touch upon the zoning as well. And then after that, the uh, public hearing will be open so that you can offer all your comments for the town board's consideration. So uh, this was done in uh, consultation and coordination with other participants. There was a comprehensive plan advisory committee. Oh, it's not working. Maybe it just... Oh, you know what? I'm going to do one other thing, too, is to share it, because maybe once it... Okay. Oh. Okay. Hopefully it'll stay up. Sorry for the technical difficulties. So as I was saying, the participants included a comprehensive plan advisory committee, which was made up of various town uh, board agencies and individuals and members of the public, uh, you know, Carmel staff, uh, the town board and ourselves, and of course the public. We had various uh, public participation events that were offered to people to provide their input. 
So this plan is for the entire town of Carmel, uh, which includes both hamlets. Uh, it was a 10 step process and we're essentially in the uh, ninth step of those 10 where we're having this public hearing to gather additional input. A comprehensive plan is a policy document that guides immediate and long range growth protection, enhancement and development of a town. Uh, as part of the process, we assess the issues and opportunities confronting the community, and then we set a vision, goals, and objectives for the community over the next 10 to 20 years. In New York State, it's important because all land use regulations, meaning your zoning regulations, must be in accordance with the comprehensive plan if one has been adopted. It's also proactive versus reactive. You're not reacting to a developer coming before you, but you're proactive and in indicating what your preferences are for the community and how you would like to see it evolve. And importantly, in today's way of the way New York State funds grants and other opportunities, it's important because oftentimes they want to see the community has set forth improvements or a vision for the community when they ask for grant funding. So inputs on putting this whole plan together, uh, again, it was the advisory committee. We had in-person and virtual workshops that started during a time period where COVID was rampant, so we had to deal with that. We did have an extensive public online survey. Uh, the responses were some of the greatest we've ever experienced in our, um, in our again, experience. There was an existing conditions inventory where we inventoried natural resources, land use and zoning, utilities, et cetera, for the community as input to understand where the town is now, and then public participation. So a comprehensive plan process asks four basic questions. Where are we now? That's existing conditions. Where are we going? That's where we want to find out where you want to go based on the public input. Uh, where do we want to be and how do we get there? That's the implementation process. What measures can we follow to get there? Again, survey results, there were about 1,105 responses over three months. There was a public hearing and we reopened the survey uh, because there were some individuals who said they didn't recall or didn't see the advertisement, so we reopened it for a, uh, a time period. So these are just some of the mapping uh, exercises we did to get a sense of how the town has evolved and developed. This is a land use map showing the various land uses and you're, you probably know this already intuitively, but you're over, overwhelmingly uh, single family residential in uses. You do have to address uh, the reality that you are within the New York City DEP watershed and your development is regulated um, stringently by New York City DEP standards for water quality. This shows the sewer districts in the community, so to accommodate additional development, there's a reality as to where you can put it given where existing sewer is, so the map shows that area. And the same thing with water. Uh, we studied and got maps of the water districts to know where water was available for additional development if that's where the town wanted to evolve. Part of the future uh, of Carmel discussion involved visual preference surveys, design surveys, um, oftentimes people don't understand what it means if you say, well, single family on a 20,000 square foot lot or a 5,000 square foot lot. So what we did do is have this mini visual preference survey where we would show images during the public participation process and say, what do you like? What do you think fits with the town of Carmel? You might like it, but you may not think it's appropriate for Carmel. That was part of the process. Um, the two images before were residential development. This, these images here are of mixed use and commercial development. So the plan itself is available online. Um, it's been updated a couple times. It consists of these chapters, an introduction, discussion of the process, vision for Carmel, land patterns, goals and objectives, and then their appendices supporting uh, the plan. And it's structured so that there's an overarching vision statement of how the town wants to evolve over the next 10 to 20 years. And then there's a series of goals and objectives and recommendations that get you toward achieving that vision statement. And ultimately, the land patterns in the town are, reflect, are a reflection of all those goals and objectives. Um, and we're gonna talk about this at the end of this presentation, where you see yourself going with land patterns is then reflected in your zoning regulations of where you can and can't put uses. So this is the vision statement. I know it's probably a little hard to read back there. Um, Town of Carmel is a community defined by the reservoirs and lakes which dominate the landscape 
and its two historic lakefront hamlets, uh, Mahopak and Carmel. Town has grown to accommodate a diversity of residential neighborhoods served by excellent schools, parks, an expanding rail trail, and other major public services. Growth has been balanced with protection of the community's natural resources and scenic beauty. Town of Carmel is where the countryside begins. Residents benefit from living in a semi-rural atmosphere while still being part of the bustling New York metropolitan region and its employment centers. In the next 10 to 20 years, the town will continue to evolve to be an attractive place to live, work, and play with socially vibrant downtowns with traditionally designed main streets interconnected by trails and sidewalks, a mixture of commercial uses, more in-town employment opportunities, and a range of housing types that meet the needs of all age groups, young adults, families, and the elderly. Downtown will feature restaurants, eateries, cultural facilities, and small businesses, recreational connect connections to the lakefronts, and will be a destination for community gatherings and events. So that's your overarching vision statement. So these are supported by various goals, and the goal categories are land use and zoning, economic development, housing, natural resources, waterfront and recreational opportunities, transportation, complete streets and trails, and historic scenic and cultural resources. So these are the overarching goals for the plan. So allow development in a pattern consistent with the conceptual land use plan, pursue diverse economic opportunities, promote diverse housing opportunities, continue to protect the natural resources which lend the town its unique semi-rural and woodland character, connect the town physically and visually to its waterfronts by enhancing public access and recreational and cultural waterfront amenities, pursue a safe and interconnected multimodal transportation system of trails, sidewalks, and streets, and then preserve and promote the town's history and scenic character embodied in its historic, in its historic buildings, cultural assets, and landscapes. So then, this is just to show you one set of objectives, but each of those goals are supported by objectives which are intended to achieve that goal. So when we talk about preserving the town's history, for example, one of the objectives is to implement design guidelines to encourage consistently attractive development. Um, land patterns is essentially the land use pattern that you see within the town. And the comprehensive plan through its goals and objectives, seeks to shape that and um, result in reuse of some areas where you want to change what you see. And so this is the concept plan map, and it really, I know, again, um, in the audience, it's difficult probably to see all this, but it really focuses and acknowledges the two largest hamlets and a third, um, Hopak Falls, it acknowledges that there are some you know, commercial centers along the transportation corridors that will continue. It supports the late communities that already exist and acknowledges them. And so everything, and then you have this outer kind of countryside with the larger lot residential uses and, and vacant properties, all within the framework of having New York City, DEP, uh, water supply, reservoirs, and, and watersheds. And so this is all, um, a reflection of what is now, and frankly, the community likes what they have, but they would like some additional infill development, additional activity within this existing framework. So that's essentially what I described. So when you go to the comprehensive plan, you will see that there are these implementation matrices. So for each of those goals and objectives, we've summarized um, all of that information within these tables as an easy way to look at um, them instead of having to go through the entire document and read each of the sections. There are a series of design guidelines in the comprehensive plan. Uh, the public really felt that it wanted to enhance, improve, and protect what were seen as attractive scenic resources, so that is a section of the comprehensive plan. And so after the comprehensive plan process occurred, um, the next step was to review and ultimately to adopt updated zoning regulations, and the zoning is what controls land use. So the town board's been overseeing the zoning amendments. Um, we're also gonna hold a public hearing this evening uh, to hear your comments on those proposed zoning revisions. We have to complete an environmental review process, which is required in New York State. When you adopt laws, you have to go through a seeker process, and then ultimately review and adopt the zoning. So what is zoning? Um, in a nutshell, it's the orderly pattern of development across neighborhoods um, 
by identifying what may be built on each piece of property. And the zoning really has two main elements. It's the zoning text, which is your existing chapter 156 of your code, and then a zoning map. So this right now, your chapter 156, if you wanna take a look at your existing regulations, they are online. And then the official zoning map is also available at the town's uh, website. And presently, you're really regulating four zoning districts in essence. So this is the proposed zoning map, and it would better define and differentiate between the various commercial and residential areas of the town. Um, so we're gonna go from four to many other zoning districts. Uh, this is an outline of each of those zoning districts, and within the zoning, it talks about the purpose of each of these zoning districts. Um, in essence, there's gonna be a conservation zone, uh, which is similar to a zone you have already, but that includes all the lands that are in public ownership, that are in open space, uh, and that are watershed line, lands that can't be developed. The low density residential area is the area that you're, in fact, the whole town is zoned for three acre residential. But in this zoning, we're gonna break out low density residential with a medium density residential, which is one acre zoning. Those areas are in and around the existing hamlets. The idea was there's a lot of three acre zoning. Those are very large lots. It's not necessarily conducive to new houses for, again, you know, young singles, young uh, families. And I'll get to another point of a change in the zoning. Because it's one acre doesn't mean that it has to be one acre, especially if it's environmentally constrained. Uh, there's a new zone called senior multifamily residential. That's just, uh, including all the properties that are already in senior multifamily use. The hospital residential zone is an area that includes the residential uses and the hospital, and it would allow some additional medical-oriented uses in that area. There's now a manufactured home park zone. That's to acknowledge that there are several manuf manufactured home parks in the town already, and so it's just identifying where they are. And it's good to point them out in the community because in New York State, you want to show that you're providing diversity of housing for a variety of reasons. And so that gives the town the ability to show the state, hey, you know, we do provide a diversity of housing. Uh, the Hamlet Mixed Use Center are the centers of the hamlets where you're going to allow the existing commercial uses that are there, but also allow some additional infill residential so that you have people that are within proximity to the downtown, can walk, can recreate, and can um, utilize the services and, and entertainment resources there. There'll be smaller neighborhood business zones. Those are just little small zones that accommodate neighborhoods that aren't close in to the developed areas of the towns, to the town centers, to the shopping centers. It's these little nodes to allow the delis, um, you know, small personal service businesses so someone doesn't have to travel very far to get to, um, you know, buy a, buy a gallon of milk. Um, quarter business is an area where the town envisions that some of the heavier commercial uses would go. So rather than encouraging, for instance, automotive-related uses in the hamlets, the desire is really to have things like restaurants and entertainment uses in the hamlets. So along the quarter business areas uh, on the main routes, that's where you would have automotive-related uses and other uses, commercial. Town commercial are your big, um, essentially your designed shopping centers are located in there where you have a lot of commercial uses. Planned recreation destination is a specific zone that's down toward Baldwin Place where there's an idea of creating a recreational destination there. Um, business park is the existing business park uh, lands and what's been uh, done is senior and multifamily housing used to be allowed in the business park but that's been taken out because the town really wants to give preference to encouraging economic development and not just housing within a business park zone. Planned mixed-use development overlay, there are two areas in the town where some additional mixed-use development can occur, that mix of housing and, and commercial. There's a design overlay, which is a new zone, which would um, establish that the building department or the planning board take a look at the design of new construction within the hamlets so that it's an attractive addition to the community. And then lastly, there's an economic development floating zone. It's not landed, 
uh, but someone can come in, petition, propose a use that would be an excellent economic development generator for the town, but it would require town board approval through a zone change. So all of those purposes are set forth in the zoning district. Um, they give a description of what the intent is. And then lastly, if you're not familiar with zoning, there's something called a schedule of district regulation. So for every, all of those zones that I described, there is a matrix that has the name of the zone, the uses that are allowed there, and what the bulk or dimensional standards are for the properties and for development in that particular zoning district. There are other amendments, um, net lot area calculation. So instead of simply just saying three acre, one acre zoning is minimum lot size allowed. You do have to deduct if you have a major wetland on the property. You don't get credit if you can't develop there anyway. Um, there is a clearing, filling, and grading permit uh, requirement for certain development or grading activities that occur before development. There have been complaints during the process that people are clear cutting properties, grading out properties with any permits to create soil erosion. That's what that concept is addressing. Reaffirm the Greenway Connections, uh, local law of the town. There are proposed shoreline regulations uh, for piers and docks. There are new uses and standards for them, which include um, allowing boutique hotels, which are small hotels, not big Marriott type hotels, craft beverage establishments, wineries, distilleries, um, agritourism uses, uh, cultural performing arts center, resort, again, there are newer uses that are proposed within these standards. There's intent to have flexible parking standards. Uh, there are regulations for accessory dwelling units. There's new provisions to uh, build some workforce housing. So if someone's proposing a very large residential development or subdivision, some proportion of them have to be made available for workforce housing, for younger adults, for seniors, something that wouldn't normally be affordable to people living in the town. Um, we've updated the site plan submission standards and then overall we've changed the zoning to be current with all the procedures in New York State town law. If you want to look at the draft zoning document, this is where you can find it. It's on the first page uh, of the town's uh, website and I encourage you to take a look at it and if you have comments to provide them to the town board. So with that, that's the brief overview and I'll let the board uh, take over and open the public hearing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Bonnie. So we're going to be uh, holding our public hearing. Did everyone that wanted to speak about the master plan uh, sign in? If not, there's a uh, list over here. You wouldn't do that yet. Get in there. <laughs> so this is uh, the first public hearing is a proposed local law pursuant to New York State Law 272A and 272A6 on the draft amended comprehensive plan in and for the town of Carmel. Can I get a motion to open the public hearing? So, Second. And all those in favor? Aye. 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 All right, unanimous. Um, if Alice would read the notice, please. Notice of public hearing. Notice is hereby given that the town board of the town of Carmel will conduct a public hearing at Town Hall, 16 McAlpin Avenue, Mahopac, New York, 10541 on Wednesday, September 18th, 2024 at 7 p.m. or as soon thereafter that evening as possible, pursuant to New, New York Town Law, Section 272A and two, Section 272A6 on the draft amended comprehensive plan being proposed in and for the town of Carmel. Um, that's enough, right? Good. Thank you. We moved, we opened it. Yep. So, uh, first up is Bill Coleman. Good evening. Uh, my name is Bill Coleman. I'm an attorney uh, with Abrams Fensterman, 81 Main Street, White Plains, New York. I represent the town of Somers. And uh, my, my comments with respect to the proposed comprehensive plan relate specifically to objective 
um, disfavoring large scale battery facilities. And I also have comments on the proposed amendment to the zoning code, section 156-8 and section 156-25B. And uh, I see that it's, um, it, it's, it's set forth as two separate public hearings. Um, would you like me to parse? I, I, really, I really can't parse these out. They're kind of dovetailed together. I don't want to uh, jump the gun, so shall I just go for it? <laughs> yeah. Okay, great. Well, thank you very much for hearing um, comment on these important issues. Um, uh, you know, drafting amendments of this type requires a substantial amount of effort, and we appreciate that. Um, and uh, w with respect to the proposed amendments to the, the zoning code uh, relating to battery energy storage systems, the proposal permits tier one systems defined as those with an aggregate energy capacity less than or equal to 600 kilowatt hours and it permits systems smaller than that and prohibits those over 600 kilowatts hours which would pose a greater danger to the public health. Um, and those are defined as, as tier two systems. Um, now, we agree that the larger systems should be prohibited, of course, and we agree that small residential systems should be permitted as proposed and regulated as proposed, but we believe that the prohibited category should include all other systems larger than, say, 80 kilowatt hours, at least until the risks are further assessed and studied. Now, in the alternative, um, if those mid-sized systems are not outright prohibited, we suggest that the board consider carving out a third permitted category, allowing systems between 80 kilowatt hours to 60 kilowatt hours, and imposing further regulations on those mid-sized systems. And this is an approach that has been taken in other municipalities in the area. Uh, residential battery energy storage systems are substantially smaller than 600 kilowatt hours and almost always below 80 kilowatt hours and would remain in that category. Uh, for example, a Tesla Powerwall, which is sort of the electronic equivalent of a, of a home generator, that, on, that is only a 13.5 kilowatt hour system. So that, you know, that's the size of the small residential ones. And you know, based on my understanding at least, even large residential and light commercial establishments do not require a storage system larger than 80. Um, so, and the smaller energy storage systems are almost always accessories to a main structure, not a standalone principal structure. So a homeowner or another owner would have a strong incentive to maintain their system safely. Um, so we agree to the proposed re regulations in 156-25B, which require a building, an electrical permit, system certification, and compliance with applicable energy and building codes, um, it, which, which are appropriate for the battery energy storage systems that are less than 80 kilowatt hours. But we believe additional safeguards should be applied to the mid-sized systems ranging from 80 to 600 to protect the public health and, and the environment. Um, these are substantially larger and they could even be standalone units large enough to power an entire subdivision or shopping mall. They pose the same risks to adjacent residents and businesses as the large facilities. And other municipalities have adopted this three-tier battery energy storage system local <coughs> law approach uh, for this very reason. For example, the town of North Castle recently passed such a local law and the village of Mamaroneck is currently considering one. Um, Additional regulation through special use permits, notice, and public hearings for mid-sized batter battery energy storage facilities is essential to protect the quality of life and environmental uh, and environment in the town of Carmel and also in Somers, uh, neighboring Somers. Um, so we would suggest that the town of Carmel adopt more stringent regulations which are similar to what's been called tier two regulations outlined in the New York State Energy Research and Development Authority model law. And in there and also in addition, uh, additional requirements for the mid-sized facilities 
would include to require special use permit and public hearing for all applicants, require uh, a notice of public hearing get, be given to landowners, residents, and, and municipalities within 1,000 feet of the boundary line of the proposed site, require that the facilities not located within 1,000 feet of the property line of any residential property or 500 feet from the property line of a non-residential property, require that facilities may not be located in any special flood hazard areas, require that mid-sized battery facilities are only permissible as accessory uses and may not be a principal use. And that's, a, that's an important distinction because as it is, um, say, oh, uh, facilities over 600 kilowatt hours are prohibited, but say they could make a smaller, propose a smaller facility, a freestanding um, principal use, in, in, you know, in, in either incrementally or all, or all at once, you know, propose or apply for a bunch of them, which we don't want that, you know. And, and that's why uh, for the mid-size uh, facilities, it should be a requirement they're only permissible as an accessory use. In other words, like a, like a, a generator system in a, an existing building or home. Uh, require that facilities may not be located within 200 feet of a designated critical environmental area require that facilities may not be located on or within the 100-foot adjacent area of wetlands. And last, we would suggest that for these mid-sized facilities, the town require applicants to complete a, a commissioning plan, a fire safety compliance plan, operation and maintenance manual, emergency operations plan, and a decommissioning plan in a form acceptable to the town of Carmel first responders. Um, and require that, uh, that these plans be made available to the public in adjacent municipalities at least 20 days before a public hearing. Um, a sample proposed local law incorporating these suggestions, incorporating the three battery energy storage system tiers that I'm speaking of is included in our written submissions that we've emailed to the board and I have a hard copy here as well. Uh, and uh, I appreciate the board's uh, time in listening to our comments and our written submissions, um, which also contains some proposed definitions for your consideration. Uh, in other jurisdictions, battery energy storage facility applicants have presented creative zoning assertions in order to claim that these facilities are permissible uses under local zoning codes. For example, we have seen battery energy storage system applicants claim that their facilities are public utilities substations, fuel storage containers, or warehouses. We have even seen a battery energy storage system applicant state on its building permit application that the proposal was for a transformer station, and it failed to even mention the phrase lithium ion battery storage facility on the application. Now, these applicants made these arguments. They were able to because the local zoning codes did not define or adequately define certain terms which would exclude those systems. So uh, without uh, going into um, too much depth, it's our written submissions suggest proposed definitions uh, for, for the board's consideration. Um, and those are also from the New York State Energy Research and Development Authority model law. And it could add clarity and avoid He's loopholes. That's it? Okay. Well, thank you very much uh, for considering my comments and our written submissions. And we're more than happy to provide assistance uh, if needed. Thank you very much. Council, do you have the hard copies that you were referring to? And there was just one question I had. I, I, maybe I miswrote uh, it in my notes. You said 80 to 60 kilowatt hours. He meant 600. I meant to say, if I said 60, I meant to say 600. Okay. I just wanted to clarify. Now, now this is what you've adopted in Somers? Uh, no, not in Somers. Uh, it's been adopted in North Castle. It's been proposed in Lamarack. But not in Somers? I thought you represent Somers. Oh, okay. Well, thank you very much. Oh, Mr. John Butler. Thank you for coming. I'm John Butler from 40 year resident of the Hamlet of Carmel. I just want to make sure I've got my, oh, the clock. I have my clock on the phone. So the attorney from Somers, with all due respect, <laughs> 
We doubled his. For, yeah, who would, yeah, because he doesn't live in Carmel, or hmm. he's a lawyer, or yeah. the matter that he was addressing has nothing to do with the comprehensive plan public hearing. Is that correct? I mean, what am I missing here? Because I want on board. I want to be able to yeah. take my you're, you're on nine board, minutes. So go ahead. Oh, oh, okay. I mean, there you go. Um, no, really? I mean, please, seriously, folks? Please, please proceed, Mr. Biden. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just questioning the process. I don't understand why a 40-year resident of Carmel has to comply with whatever the rules are, but an attorney from an adjoining town that has really no bearing on the matter at hand gets precedence over a resident. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I understand that, the matter. Don't, don't address. Don't, I understand please, don't. the issue. I'm not saying. I'm mean, not discounting or dismissing the issue at hand. I get it, and I agree with you, a hundred percent. Mr. Butler, but don't let's talk, talk to, about the comprehensive just, con, plan. Con, con, and and let's talk about this. the comprehensive plan. Otherwise, known as the master you. plan, which is incorrect. This, in my opinion, is, again, as a 40-year resident of the town of Carmel, is possibly one of the most dangerous documents I've ever seen, ever. But let's get some things straight. Number one, we, this matter is, it's a public hearing. It's going to be voted on, presumably, by the town board at some future date. We do not have a complete town board. We're short one member. A comprehensive plan that will be in effect and govern you know, these matters for the next 10 years should be voted on by a full town board. Therefore, the matter should be tabled until such time as we have a full town board. That's please. Who are these people? Please don't. I don't understand. It's, <laughs> it's crazy. Um, <laughs> secondly, I would, I would suggest to the residents of the town that they actually go on the website and read this comprehensive plan. And I would suggest to them that they focus on one section, the, the larger section of housing. And you will see within that section things of um, matters such as equity versus equality, uh, diversity. These are matters that, we are, that are on the forefront of our national elections coming up, and they are in compliance, in my personal opinion, with exactly what I think conservative uh, members of the board, and for that matter, member, conservative residents of the town, are in exact opposition to. Exactly. And we, if this comprehensive plan is adopted, in my opinion, we will place the town of Carmel in a position not dissimilar to the decades of litigation, et cetera, that occurred down in Yonkers for many, many years. It's opening a door to something that we do not want to allow to come here. And that's my comments on the comprehensive plan. Thank you very much. For and coming. I got a minute left. <laughs> Shall I sing? No, but I'll, I'll see you at the Carmel Firehouse at the next public hearing. Oh. Mrs. Hopper. Hi, everybody. Jean Hopper, Mahopak. Um, I want to thank uh, the planning board for all their work. From what I understand, they did a lot of work, put in a lot of hours, a lot of detail. Um, they completed their review about two years ago, and here we are today, two years later. Uh, so I thank the planning board, and I hope everybody else does as well. A lot of work went into painstaking detail on every point. Um, regarding the comprehensive plan, what, what cost expenditures have we outlaid so far for consultants and attorneys? I mean, we've been working on this for years. Any, any estimates on what this has cost us? 
I don't our have, money. I don't have the, do you know about how much? What was the original contract? Well, I don't know. Nothing. But I can get it for you. Yeah, if you could please let us know, um, that would yeah, be great. Next yeah, meeting. I don't want to give you any wrong information. I appreciate yeah. that, and I think we all do. Um, I probably won't be here next week. It's kind of silly for us to come every week for a follow-up. And so I, would, I do watch the it, meetings. I would appreciate a comment about that next week. But there should be a it's resolution probably on around, that. Yeah, yeah, there should be a resolution. It had to I be believe approved. Bonnie was just saying... Yeah, he's trying um, to find if it. If he finds it, we'll... I, okay, I want thanks, to say guys. around $100,000. Thank you. Well, thank you for coming. And... Oh, Cindy Cole. Give her a minute. Hi. Cindy Cole, Carmel. Um... In regards to the comprehensive plan, uh, objective 1.12 regarding the best energy project, it, your wording of the town does not favor allowing large scale solar and or battery storage facilities. What do you mean by not favor? It should be not allowed. Especially the, the fact, due to the environment, the animals that live in that environment, the people that live on Lonsbury Drive, all their water would be contaminated and affected if, if this went through because they all have well water. It really needs to be thought out. Because the fact that, you know, this is even being brought up, and the fact that you put not favor is ridiculous, just ridiculous. And um, also the rest on the comprehensive plan as far as the historic section of the comprehensive plan. Um, the town historian and the president of the historical society will talk more about that, but something that a lot of people don't realize is the town of Carmel the houses along the hamlet and the houses down Fair Street and houses up Seminary Hill Road are extremely old and historic. So when I read through and I see how you want to, you know, revitalize the downtown and I'm reading about two or three story apartment buildings and things like that, that does not belong in the town of Carmel at all. Yeah. At all. Yeah. Carmel has always been historic. It has been a lot of the houses have been there since the 17 and 1800s, and the landscape should be saved in the town of Carmel and the town of Mahopac and Mahopac Falls. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Alicia Braley. I was gonna. Oh boy. <laughs> Thank you, Mom. <laughs> um, First things first, I guess this is becoming a regular, um, but here we are. Um, so like my mom mentioned, I'm the town of Carmel historian, the president of the Historical Society. I'm sure we all know that by now. Two separate entities, but we work together. Um, first things first, um, in section seven, starting on page 64, objective 7.6, um, it talks about planning board review, okay. I get that, it's important, but it should include the historian and the historical society. Objective 7.7, .7, you just have town of Carmel Historical Society, it should say town historian as well. Then you talk about the board of architectural review. Who is on the board of architectural review? I don't know, I feel like I've asked a bunch of people, nobody knows, just curious if that's still a thing. As part of its authority, um, regarding the planning board and the state um, preservation office, they don't always have time to do these sort of matters. Um, so it should really go down to a local level and should have supervision. The planning board should have supervision from the town historian and the historical society. A few more things. But I'll be coming back during public comment at the way end of the night to talk about other things not regarding the comprehensive master plan. Objective 7.8, the current price for historic markers are $1,500 and they are going up in price. So when you talk about signage, be a little bit more clear on that. Objective 7.9, again, planning board act in its capacity should include the historian and the historical society. 
Objective 7.13, work with the Historical Society to create a walking tour of the Carmel Hamlet Center, which has significant historic resources. If you follow us on the social media, we just gave one this past weekend, myself and my grandfather. So that's already being done. Um, side note, for the best facility, um, it harms wildlife and Mother Earth. Can we really start thinking about the future seven generations to come? And like I said, um, I'll be coming back up, but that's all I have for right now. But please just do better. Thank you, Alicia. I just, real quick, I just wanted to answer Ms. Hopper's question. Um, so the total is $112,560. You're welcome. Thank you. Uh, Charlie Cole, Hamilton Carmel, please. Yeah, my problem is with you people up there, town board. I think you have a problem with communication. And I've already said this years ago when Del Campo was sitting up there. And I got a newsletter out when the Hamlet of Carmel was going through the sewer process. Frank and I got together and we came up with a newsletter and it was sent out quarterly, you know, so the people in the Hamlet would know what the heck is going on. Now, how many people in the Hamlet were notified about this master plan? You put it on social media. I don't follow social media. You know, I'm 85 years old. I, I'm not com computer, a computer expert. You know, you people don't have any problem individually sending out a notice when you're running for election. You know? I live up in the north end of town in the Hamlet of Carmel. I would like to know how many people in the Hamlet, Carmel Hamlet, were asked questions for this master plan. I bet you there was none. Yep, you're right. You know, I bet, I don't know anybody. You know, people don't know about these things. You got, like this meeting here tonight, it, it's a very important, the comprehensive plan because it's supposed to be for 10 years, but you don't have any pro you don't notify anybody. I didn't know about this unless I asked questions with people. All you gotta do is send out a one page thing to every resident in the town. Not the way you're doing it. You know, this was started when, what, Ken was up there as supervisor. Now, at what stage are you at financially with this plan? Are you paying as you go? Or are you paying when it's adopted? Or what, what's, what's the rush? I can see the rush for the town law. That I can see. But what is the rush for the master plan? Because, you know, you've got to notify the people. And if you want to know about a newsletter, i got a couple copies right here. I can give you, Mike, so you can see. It's not hard to do, so it costs a few bucks. I mean, you're going around and you're hitting all these people up that are selling their houses for things that they permits they don't have, you know, and that's not right, because years ago, you know, I was in a building business. I know they didn't require a CO. No one asked for a CO. I remember a building inspector at one time, one point in time, way back, he said, I'm too busy, I can't come out and look. I was building a house. He says, I can't come out and look at the foundation, or at the, the ground for the foundation. So he said, go ahead and start, and I'll get there one day. You know, but that's not the way it should be. You know, I, those are just some of my concerns that I got. But you gotta notify the people. 
You can't just sit up there and shoot your mouth off and, you know, about this thing and that thing. And, you know, you got to consider the people in town, what they want. You know, every time we have these demonstrations up at a courthouse, and when I'm aware of it, I go out and see, because I want to see what the hell's going on, what these people are doing to our town. You know, and so I figured, well, I would come down here because I want to see what, what you people are up to. Because I don't know what it's going to cost me in the future. You know, I'm not going to be around that much longer, maybe another 10 years, but uh, that'll be it. And so, you know, I got to know what my expenses are going to be. But this town, I don't know, you hired somebody from where, the other side of the county? Can't you find anybody that's around here locally, somewhere around us, that knows this town and knows what it's like? These people don't know us from Adam over there. And yet they do, and they're making the plans all the way for the town. And that's not right, I don't think. That's my opinion, so. Thank you for your comment, Mr. Cole. Mr. Cole, thank, thank you for coming up, but I do want to let you know um, the people that we hired did not make this plan. The residents did, and when you were saying that nobody notified, there was various ways to be notified, and we did take into account. I've got older parents. My mom left, and she doesn't go on the email either. We had multiple things. We had variable signs put out. It did go into the mail. It went into everybody's mail. I know people are saying they didn't get it. But you didn't we send did, anything to yes, each individual we, yes, in the town. We, if you had, you do when you with the garbage, when you're running for office, you send it to everybody in town. Actually, actually, I I don't. So you but, can send it. No, you can send the town did, notice out to everybody. Mr. Cole, I'm, I'm not going to argue. I just want to correct you. It was no, sent well, out. Well, I'm telling you, like it is too. I didn't get any notice about anything okay and I apologize if you and even when you, when someone does any alterations to their property they're supposed to notify everybody within 500 feet but because of the pandemic nobody got notified just like the golf course over there that land is supposed to be an open space and now they rezoned it I guess and they're gonna put condos over there because you people wanted more money to spend no. Not because we wanted it. You got I, I more housing in this town for seniors that are occupied by people from New York City than it is from anybody around here. I, I just wanted to make, I just wanted to, and I mentioned it the last time. I think you've been we, on the I town just, board long enough, and I, I think it's time for you to resign. I, I, have, to, I have to say I, I agree with you, and as I've told people this is my last term and I have enjoyed it immensely and I want to thank everybody and I'll do that later on next year but I can assure you that you don't need to get back up I I'm I'm that's okay I have thick skin <laughs> it's okay um you, you know that we did do the best that we could notifying people as the old saying K we can notify anybody about anything if they, if they don't look at it, they don't accept it. But I just want to let you know, we're hearing your comments tonight, and I want to thank you for okay. that. Okay, I'll give you an F. That's okay. Can I get a motion got, to close the public hearing? That's okay. Motion to close, anybody? Motion to close public hearing? What? So yeah. moved. Anybody second that? Second. And all in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, shh, please. That was for the master. Uh, Councilman Lombardi, would you read the seeker? So, yeah. whereas the town board of the town of Carmel has reviewed the short form environmental assessment form in regards to the Carmel 2024 comprehensive plan, and whereas the adoption of said comprehensive plan is a type one action under 6 NYCRR Part 617 of the State Environmental Quality Review Regulations, and whereas the Town Board has reviewed the expanded environmental assessment form prepared by NOS 
Nelson Pope Verges and assess the possible impacts and their magnitude on the environment in accordance with the seeker regulations and given due consideration thereto, now be it resolved that pursuant to part 16, excuse me, 617 of seeker regulations, the town board of the town of Carmel hereby designates its intention to serve as lead agency for seeker review of this action and in this capacity will conduct an uncoordinated review. Be it further resolved that pursuant to part 617 of the implementing regulations pursuant to article eight of the environmental conservation law, comma, <clears throat> the lead agency hereby determines that the proposed action will not have a significant effect on the environment and be it further resolved the town board of Tana Carmel hereby determines that based upon the information conducted in the expanded assessment form and their analysis thereof, this proposed action will not result in any significant adverse environmental impacts under seeker regulations and hereby adopts a negative declaration in regards to the proposed action. I offer this resolution as read. Second. Can we get a roll call, please? Councilman Kearns? Yes. Councilman McDonough? Yes. Councilman Lombardi? Aye. Supervisor Kazari? Yes. Um, will anyone make a motion to adopt the master plan? The comprehensive. Oh, the comprehensive. The 2024 comprehensive plan, right? Yeah, make, make a motion. A okay. Second. Anybody second? The master plan? So, so we just had a public hearing about the master plan that uh, the comprehensive so master plan, not now, the zoning. Not the zoning. We haven't gotten to that yet. So now, I requested a motion to adopt that master, that comprehensive 2024 master plan. So I'm looking for a second. John, this is actually just did the a second public hearing. Public hearing. This is the second public hearing for the comprehensive master plan. So, okay, no. so there's no second? No. All right, so, so if there is no second on the master plan, then we'll. This will be the, oh, this is the third. Yeah. Hmm? No second. What? All right. So, moving on to the second. Uh, okay. Shh. Please. Right. No, it's not dead. Not dead. No, we just no, have to bring it up again. It'll just continue and continue and continue. Yes. So this is the third public hearing for the comprehensive master plan. That is a fact. The third. The zoning will be the first. Tonight is the third comprehensive plan. Okay? We'll have to look up what the dates were. No. We had, we had pro so, so, shh, please, go ahead. So August was, was the last a public one. hearing in July or August of 2022. There was a public hearing in August of 2024, and this is the third public hearing on the comp plan tonight. That's all correct. Okay. Excuse me. So this. But we all can't hear you back here. If you need to speak up, just look back. Okay. Yeah. So so what he said is that there was a public hearing on the comprehensive plan in August of 2022. There was another comprehensive master plan public hearing in August of 2024, and this is the third public hearing for the comprehensive master plan in September of 2024. Shh. So moving on to the second public hearing. This is the public hearing for the proposed local law amending chapter 156 of the town code of the town of Carmel entitled zoning.
we plan on keeping this public hearing open for comment and uh, for written comment, email, until the meeting that we're having on Wednesday, October 16th. Okay? Do that by motion at the end. But we're making that motion at the end. I'm just saying that we're leaving that one open until the 16th. Uh, if uh, our town clerk, Alice Dilley, oh, wait, we have to open it. Can I get a motion to open so the second public hearing? So and moved. A, and a second? Second. And all in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, if our town clerk would read this notice, please. Sure. You can't hear? Okay. Why, why, are you, why are you yelling from the back, ma'am? What? Well, because apparently this, this amount of people, just like in our government today, we can't speak up and speak what we think. And then people like you sit there and just do whatever you want to do. Okay, ma'am. But I'm sorry, I'm speaking for these people who want to speak up and say something. And it's about to be a public hearing, ma'am, where they can speak. Well, Please. Okay. Well, you have to make it very clear for these we haven't gotten there yet, please. Okay. It's taken a long time. <laughs> Thank you. And attorney jargon doesn't work for most people. What? Attorney jargon. What's that? What's that? A motion for what? So if everyone would be quiet, our town clerk is going to read the notice for the public hearing on zoning. Notice of public hearing. Notice is hereby given that the town board of the town of Carmel will conduct a public hearing at the town hall, 16 McAlpin Avenue, Mahopac, New York, 10541, on Wednesday, September 18, 2024, at 7 p.m. or soon thereafter that evening as possible, on a proposed local law which is proposing multiple amendments to Chapter 156 of the Code of the Town of Carmel entitled Zoning. Thank you. Mrs. Reardon? Good evening, Carrie Reardon, Putnam County resident, confidential address. I am here this evening to discuss the very urgent and necessary change. Oh, oh just one second, one second, I'm sorry. Uh, stop the clock. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. We're not doing this today. Could, could you just please have respect for the woman? She's up here speaking. When, when it's your turn to speak, hopefully everyone will be respectful of you too, all right? Thank you. I'm here this evening to discuss the very urgent and necessary change of currently existing zoning laws, rules, and regulations that do and do not exist. While I'm no expert yet on this matter, I would like to know who is. What level of expertise does any said board member on any one of our boards has concerning a battery energy storage facility and zoning regulations. Where can I find everyone's credentials, data, facts, and research? And what other experts in battery energy storage systems have been consulted with? We wouldn't go to a heart surgeon for brain surgery. Therefore, we wouldn't trust elected officials or volunteers who have no degree or background in things like grid integration, how energy is sold, where, and who benefits from it. What expert is there on any of our boards versed in cybersecurity, cyber attacks, breaches, or physical damage to a best facility? As cybersecurity is a critical component of infrastructure and consequences, who here is trained and skilled in recycling infrastructure for end-of-life battery facilities, and who here can tell me how long the infrastructure of a best facility is good for? I know the answer. Do we have any experts here that specialize in grid integration and the complexities of power grids? What about the underground cables or sewage systems necessary for a best facility? Zoning. We need clear zoning regulations. And what about the environmental impacts that will need to be changed? Fire safety codes, recycling end-of-life batteries, and building structures, and long-term investments, economic impacts on the community. And these will, these will always be changes. 
Therefore, it is critical that zoning ordinance and fire codes keep up to date with all of these moving components and infrastructure requirements, in addition to upgraded to electrical grid need, not to mention environmental compliance, regulation, water, air quality, noise pollution, hazardous waste materials, reoccurring permits, inspections, contamination of damaged cables, soil erosion, ecological impacts, water, contamination, health risks associated with materials such as nickel, heavy metals, acidity, alkalinity, chemical contamination, water contamination, biohazard waste, and regulatory compliances of ever-changing federal, state, local, and regulations. Constant changes in emergency preparedness and plans. Shelter in place is not a plan. Our community, we the people, deserve a human scale environment that preserves its character and quality of life, having quality of life. Having a 116 megawatt lithium ion best facility farm will overwhelm our infrastructure. We demand zoning laws that prioritize the well-being and safety of its community members over generational wealthy cash cow companies whose only goal is money and could care less about our community safety or environment. The time for inaction is over. Before tragedy strikes, we demand immediate changes to ensure the safety and well-being of this community and surrounding ones. The weight of inaction of not changing these zoning laws is a disaster waiting to happen. The zoning law rules and regulations must be changed now to include not allowing this or any other large-scale battery energy storage system, their grids, or counterparts. Not here, not now, not ever, and we demand the change tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Carrie Newberger. Uh, good evening, town board. Carrie Newberger, uh, Simpson Road, Carmel. I'm the vice president of Putnam County Fish and Game Association. Uh, we found out about the Rod and Gun Club provisions. Putnam County Fish and Game Association has 600 member families. 250 of them are in the town of Carmel. A number of my members are here tonight. If you all could just get up to be seen. I'm curious how many I've got here. Um, the, the zoning code came up with Rod and Gun Club and some of the stuff was fairly outrageous, kind of arbitrary, bears no relation to any legitimate goal. So I gave you some comments and was told and spoke to you all, nice pleasant conversations, was told that, that you had determined to make this only look forward to new clubs, not to existing clubs. And I waited for the revised zoning code and it was published at the end of August and it didn't work. Because what you did was you said, this chapter applies to new clubs. Well, of course it does. It applies to all the land in the town. It applies to new clubs. It applies to old clubs. What you didn't say is this chapter only applies to new clubs. It doesn't apply to existing clubs. And I got to admit, the first time I read it, I was fooled. I thought, you did it. We got there. And then I read it again, and I thought about it. And I went, you know, you didn't do it. So I sent you my suggested drafting, which does exactly what you told me you were going to do, which is to exempt the existing clubs. And I'm here just to say I would appreciate if you would adopt those changes. It's a sentence and a word. And what it does is it effectively does what you told me you're going to do, which is if there's ever a new club, which there won't be, it's got to put up with all this stuff that makes no sense. Fine. I'm here for Putnam County Fishing Game. That, that's, I'm representing them and my 600 families. Please change that language, and then you've done what you said you would do. That, that's it. I've got used half my time. I'm done. Thank you very much. We can I, now go back to you. But,
I, I just want Mike um, yeah, the, the and, and Dorbani to, to talk about this briefly. The existing two clubs we have are operating under uh, membership clubs as determined by Supreme Court 20 years ago, maybe more. So any new club that comes in, if they ever want to do it, they would have to follow all these requirements. I see if you add only into this one sentence, that would clarify. So, so. my question for you, um, is there any way for us to rewrite it? So if a new club wants to come in, we're not making it hard, we're not making it harder for them to create a new club? So to me, it sounds like we're trying to limit the Second Amendment supporters in this, in this town. I, I know I'm a proud Second Amendment supporter. <laughs> So I would like to see it scratched completely from the, well, the code. The only way you could do that is not put this in there and keep it as is status quo now, and that would make every gun club and rod, you know, rod and gun club fall under the existing membership clubs. Right, and as I spoke to you about, the, my fear with that is because we want to preserve what is there. My fear with that is if we take it out, from what I understand, it's from a, sorry Greg, it's from a, um, a, a judge. If a new judge comes in and says something different, then, you, then I hate to use the words, then you're screwed. So we're trying to prevent it from, from, from you guys being screwed, from the gunning clubs being, you know, annihilated. So if, if Mike says that we can add that one word or, or Bonnie to make it how you're it, comfortable a with in a it. Word. Yeah, Mike, yeah. you have it? Yeah, it'd be these provisions shall only apply to new rod and gun clubs. And then it goes on to say that they won't apply to existing rod and gun clubs. That we could add to, that's fine. Yeah. Yeah. We, that, which is what you've told me. Right. Yep. I, I would just like the yeah. words to match the intention. Yep. So down the road, it's not, gosh, what did they really mean? Right, of it's there it in applies. black and white. It applies to everything. Yeah. Because this law. Yep. Applies to all the land in the town. Yeah. I'd still so like to remove it. You got it. that good? Yeah, I, I, I would you, remove it. I would that, like to that, remove no. it too. I'm, I, all right. I'm not arguing that. I'm here for Putnam fishing game. That's my, I think that it's madness myself. I think there's stuff in there that's just plain wrong. But my with capacity. That provision, it, it, with that no, provision? No, with the whole, the whole section. With, with that provision yeah. representing Putnam fishing game, and that's, that's why I'm standing here before right. you as I'm talking as the vice president, board member for nine years, care about this, Sorry. it's a wonderful place. I want to preserve it. Mm -hmm. We've been there since 1932. We're the stewards of our property. It yep. is phenomenal. And I don't want a future event where a less kind board comes in and says, well, of course this applies to you and you need 500 feet to the property line for a range, and you mm -hmm. can never build a garage without a zoning variance. Yeah. It's not even just a site plan yeah. approval. Yeah. Yeah. You need a zoning variance. Thank you. Yeah, we, we hear you. We, we, have, we hear so you loud and clear. Susie, if I may, if I may, because what, I just want to, I want to clarify. So these do apply only to uh, new clubs. They don't apply to the old, but please say we're happy to. It, 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 excuse me. Could I, con could I please speak? And so we're happy to put that additional language in. And I, I agree and, adding the additional language, but I don't want to make it harder for new clubs to join. If a new club wants to come yeah, and, so and open I, up. I'm going to, I'm going to add, so I'm going to add and just and explain that. So these regulations are put into place. They were based on some model law, revised based on your situation, but it's a special use permit. And right in special use permits, it requires planning board approval. They can waive those regulations. The planning board on the basis of looking at the specifics of a rod and gun club can say, they're not next to a residential neighborhood, so therefore we're not concerned about that particular provision and we're gonna waive it. So because these are embedded in a special use permit section, it's not a variance. They're waivers, unless can, your attorney tells Mike, me Unless otherwise. it's a dimensional part though. Yeah, but otherwise, uh, other standards, they're not. And even the dimensional standards, again, I'll defer to the attorney, in terms of because they're embedded in the special use permit section, whether they need a waiver or versus a variance for the dimensional pieces, I'll defer. But again, planning board has a lot of authority. And the, and the primary reason it was put in for the new was if it ended up next to a lake community, a residential neighborhood. 
so that there was some standards in there. That can be waived if it's not next to that. But whether the board wants to just not include the regulations or not, that's your, that's your decision. Yeah. I'm just giving you the kind of the explanation. Yeah, we can certainly, where is he, where'd he go? Put that language in so, so you're covered with it. I'll look at you because I know um, that we can put that language in without a doubt. No, so, so, please, don't, please, no, don't, no, don't, no. Don't, so, don't I don't want my personal opinion is this is if we get rid of it, another judge can come in and make a determination, and then Putnam Gun and Willowwood is done. All right, that is my. Please don't, please don't yell from the audience. So it's Ray, Ray Cote, your yes. turn. Ray Cote from Carmel, um, Cherry Hill Road. And in the spirit of full disclosure, um, I'm also a member of the planning board, um, and I'm a member of the Putnam County Fish and Game. Um, I'm just following up Carrie. So Carrie really wanted to address you and just focus on protecting the club, and that's why he was asking for the language. Um, I'm coming up here, um, and I'm... I just want to tell you guys that, I mean, we worked as a planning board on the comprehensive plan for a long time. So I can only imagine how much time you guys put into it because we had a very limited um, uh, task and, and it took us a while to do that and it only involved a portion of the master plan. You guys dealt with the whole thing. So, I, you know, hats off, I recognize you guys worked hard on it. Um, the thing, though, is, you know, the, the code revisions, I mean, the zoning, it's... Uh, I think it was like 170 something pages. So I, I get it that, you know, you may not have read every single word and looked at every detail. And I, I just want to point out to you that as a lawyer looking at it, I think that, that the section that we're here talking about, 156-36.26, I think there were a lot of problems with it, okay? And I'm asking you in, in the beginning, I would appreciate it if the board would remove it from the zoning code. Okay. We move it, right? I you believe think? that okay. it should be removed. I, I believe that there are many, many parts of it that are, are what we would call arbitrary and unreasonable. Mm -hmm. I mean, to, to, to simply say 50 acres, well, where does that come from? Is there some sort of study that shows that 50 acres is the desirable size for a gun range? I, I, I'd, be, I'd love to see that, but I, I don't think that that's the case. Um, there are many other parts of the, the code. That, I won't go into all of them, but... You know, there's a provision in there about dogs. I mean, where does that come from? You, you can't board dogs there? I mean, we don't, but my question mm -hmm. is, where does that come from? It just seems kind of odd. Um, you know, tracer bullets. Well, we have rules against using those. But again, why? I mean, there are so many other types of bullets. There are incendiary bullets. I mean, you're just choosing one type, and it just, again, it seems rather arbitrary, OK? Okay. Um, the other part of it is, and, and I say this for reluctance because I'm a member of the planning board, but to me it seems to give too much discretion to the planning board. It gives the planning board um, the ability to impose conditions and in its discretion to mitigate noise, public safety, and diminution of property value. I mean, those are some broad terms. Uh, diminution of property value. So somebody who's a quarter of a mile away who comes in and says, I can't sell my property because of this noise. Um, and then how do you measure that? It just, there's just too much in it that I think is just really very loosey-goosey, arbitrary, and, and very unreasonable. And also in the spirit of full disclosure, I live walking distance from the gun range. So I've been here for 30, I don't know, four years, I think. I've lived next to the gun range for 34 years. I've only been a member for about 10 of those 34 years. Um, and I can tell you that I, I really don't hear the noise. Maybe I'm drowning it out in my own head, but I, I don't hear it. Um, so it's never really been a problem, but putting that aside, now that I'm a member, I can tell you these guys are good neighbors. They go out of their way to mm -hmm. be good neighbors to everybody around the club, they live it. Um, activity at the club to certain hours and I can tell you I'm proud to be a member there they really do care about the neighborhood the community and I will leave you with the final thought I'm imploring the board to remove this to from just the remove the, this section That's okay what I'm asking about. perfect Thank you. thanks Ray
Thank, thank you, Ray. Frank? Frank Sian, a longtime member, Mayor Peck. I have nothing to say to this dictatorship tonight. I'm going to be honest with you guys. It's whatever you guys approve, it's what goes on here. I hope you guys understand when election season comes, right. you don't reelect them. That's what we have to do. Right. Because otherwise, we're not going to get anywhere. Who's the judge? Hello, Susie. You're off the Frank, Who's the you judge? Know what? You know You're what I'm actually this? doing? I'm what? taking the advice that I just heard from people, and I'm looking up 156.36 to you. erase it, Frank, so we can take it out. Because I Thank do you. listen to the people. Thank you. That's okay? good, Susie. And I believe Thank it or not, I Appreciate can multitask. A lot of people come up here. We don't get you. any answers. Okay? So I, I, I am taking this out because... It's not my it's not my vote. It's your guys' vote. Thank you. It's not what I want. Okay. It's what you want. Listen, I've been in the community here for sixty three years, so yeah, I got skin in the game too. So yeah. I do I do put my stuff in. But I listen to you guys. And if I disagree, agree with something, I I'd like to know though. Just tell I us what's the big deal, whether you disagree, here. agree. You should talk to us. Like human beings, and, and that's what you don't I like just some, tell did. us. And I heard from them, so that's what I'm looking up. I'm I'm sorry right. if it appears that I'm being rude and not listening. Who was the judge? I though? want to make I don't sure well, what judge is I want to make I'm, sure that I get this and put my paper clip on here so it's. So but who is the judge? You said. Who she's is saying the judge? that a, a judge could oh. do that. What was the lawsuit? Oh. Who was the she's judge? Saying that, sorry. So. Oh, yeah. Go ahead, Mike. Michael, explain it. Yeah. She's saying that a judge made a decision back in 80, whatever it was. Another judge could overturn that decision. That's all that she's saying. Right. Okay. That's all. And if I'm a judge does But it sounded like that. the judge just made an agreement. I mean, just made a no, no, decision. No, no. That's I'm why. Just, am I not right? I am. And, and I apologize for okay. not putting that right. I want to preserve what we have here with the okay. two clubs. It's fine. All right. I, I love them. So, okay. you know, I want to make sure. So. All right. Have a good night, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Frank. And Frank, you see the difference. There's people to answer questions. It's a public hearing, not public comment. Um, Mr. Nicholas, please come up. Hi, uh, Dave Nicholas, 44 year resident of Mayapac. Um, I didn't read this whole thing yet. It's really difficult to read. Um, it's got a lot of spelling errors too, but <laughs> anyhow, I mainly want to. I have a few comments about the uh, 2024 Shoreline Activities Code section, and right off the bat, a lot of stuff that I that was going to be in it is gone, which I'm happy to see. But I really think the whole thing should be gone. Um, like a few uh, specifics. It it says that a, a a lakefront lot must be at least 75 feet wide at the waterfront to, for, to have a dock. Most lots on Lake Mayapak are not 75 feet wide. Mm -hmm. So none of them are going to be- pre Those are going to be pre-existing. Except for pre-existing, yeah. And 15 foot side setback. Again, makes no sense because most lots are, especially down 6N, they're 30 feet wide, 40 feet wide, 10 feet wide. Yeah. None of them are going to comply. Right, but they're pre-existing. I know, but if they want to change anything, they can't or get a new dock or change it, you know, it, it, it puts them right off the, out of it. I guess they could go for a variance, but it's still, it seems unnecessary. Um, it says no docks can be rented. So then that's basically saying if every re everybody on the whole lake that rents a dock now, and most of them only, only started renting after the reassessment and their taxes were doubled or tripled. I know I have a few lots that my taxes went drastically high when they reassessed it. Anyhow, so now you're going to be saying that there'll be two existing marinas that can are the only places that can rent a slip on the lake. That means that um, there's a marina that rents seven or eight pontoon boats. This year especially, I see people putting 20 or 25 people on that boat and, and none of them know anything about boating and they're out there in the middle of the lake all day long probably throwing their garbage in bottles. They're not from around this town. They don't give a damn. Um, the fishing boats, they put in at one of the marinas. You see lots of jersey plates, people from all over the, the, the world, practically, throwing fishing boats in and dragging fish out of this lake. They shouldn't be here. Um, anybody in the world can launch a canoe or a kayak at the park. 
and that's crazy. Um, but, but meanwhile, while all this is going on, and also anybody can pay 20 bucks at one of the marinas and, drop, and launch their boat for the day. Anybody can. No, who knows if they're bringing in uh, zebra mussels. That's, that's how they got in the lake in the first place, yeah. and now we're dealing with that. But meanwhile, there's something like 570 lots on the lake. Now, two of them are going to be able to rent um, uh, slips, and 568 can't. And uh, meanwhile, they're the ones that have the money invested in the lake. They're the ones that are paying extremely high taxes on the lake. And they're severely limited to, as to what they can do with their waterfront. And I don't think any of that's right. Um, another thing is who's going to decide what, what lots or what docks are grandfathered in? I mean, I know of, of docks that have been there for, you know, dozens of years, 40, 50 years, and are they grandfathered or are they not? Who's gonna decide? I think everything has to be grandfathered that's there, right? I don't know. Yeah, anything and the use as well? Yeah. See what I mean? It's, it's, a, it's a problem. And it's gotta be enforceable, which is the, uh, the big problem. It's a big problem. Yeah. Um, and then you're given free reign for the marinas to charge anything they want uh, if this goes through. And that's not right. Um, that's about it. I think that that section should be just taken out. Thank you. And that's what I got for tonight. Thank you. Thanks for coming. So uh, the attorneys, right? Sarah O'Shea. May, I'm sorry, may I just add something? Because there was a question about pre-existing and what the date is. So yes. for those who are in the audience, you can see that I have the zoning up. So when a question is asked, I'm trying to get to that section to help out and you can understand what the regulations are. So to the question with regarding pre-existing waterfront structures, they would be anything in existence on or before September 1st, 2024. So if you had anything before September 1st, 2024, it's grandfathered. Right. No, the town and the town wasn't regulating it, so. Right. Yeah. I'd yeah, I'd, I don't want to get into, only because you have a, a person up here who wants to speak, but I just wanted to give you the, the date. And if you have additional questions, you can come up and speak. Thank you, Bonnie. Sarah. Thank you. Good, uh, good evening, Supervisor Kazari and members of the town board. My name is Sarah O'Shea of the law firm of Gettinger, Waldinger, Monteleone, Gashu, and Hollis at 118 North Bedford Road in Mount Kisco, New York. Our firm represents the board of directors of the Preserve at Somers Homeowners Association, which is located just south of the border of Carmel. I'm here to encourage your board to adopt the proposed definition of battery energy storage systems as it prohibits tier two battery energy storage systems within the town of Carmel. The adoption of land use re Thank you. The adoption of land use regulations should be guided by two criteria. Whether the proposed regulation is consistent with the goals of the governing comprehensive plan and whether the regulation contributes to or promotes public health, safety, and general welfare. The function of land use regulation is to implement a plan for the future development of the community. When a proposed zoning classification is challenged in court, it will not be upheld if it conflicts with or is incompatible with the governing comprehensive plan. And tier two battery energy storage systems are not compatible with the goals of either the proposed comprehensive plan or the currently governing comprehensive plan from 2000. Having previously addressed battery energy storage systems and the proposed plan, I will be focusing on whether the, pro the proposed ordinance complies with the 2000 plan, as that still governs as of tonight. <laughs> um, the main land use goal of the 2000 comprehensive plan 
was to establish a balance among protection of natural environment resources, maintain quality neighborhoods, provide necessary community services, and ensure a sound economic base. It also goes on to require environmentally sound planning and land use regulations that reflect the carrying capacity of the land and the historic character of the town. Allowing large scale battery energy storage systems that would require the development of large swaths of forested land and risk causing pollution and fire is not environmentally sound planning and is not sensitive to the carrying capacity or historic character of the town. Proponents of these larger scale systems will claim that they benefit the town's economic basis, base. However, the 2000 plan also requires the town to sensitively develop its economic sector consistent with the other goals of this plan and only to promote local business in the context of community character and environmental sensitivity. Even with a buffer or required setback area, a battery energy storage system cannot be sensitively located within any district that adjoins a residential area or with regard to natural resources if it also requires large scale deforestation and poses a significant risk of pollution and fire. Accordingly, the currently proposed version of the zoning code as it prohibits tier two battery energy storage systems should be adopted pursuant to the currently governing comprehensive plan and its land use goals. It should also be adopted because it promotes public health, safety and general welfare. New York state courts have held that a zoning ordinance will be struck down if it does not bear a substantial relation to the town's police power and the objective of promoting public safety, health, and general wel welfare. As this board is aware, battery energy storage systems are a new and still developing technology and pose significant threats to residents of the town of Carmel and its neighbors. There have been multiple fires at battery energy storage systems, including three in New York State just last year. Not only is the te technology still developing, but so are the laws and guidelines regulating that technology. The New York State Working Group that was formed in response to last year's fires only recently proposed an updated version of the state fire code that is supposed to more effectively regulate these systems and prevent fires but that code has not been finalized or adopted. Accordingly, this town should not amend its zoning code to permit these large scale battery energy storage systems while we are still learning so much about the risks they pose and how they regulate the facilities. We therefore encourage the board to adopt the proposed definition as it prohibits tier two battery energy storage systems within the town of Carmel. Roland, you're up. Thank you. So, so just um, just before people, I see some people have already left. Uh, we worked on a standalone um, battery law that we're going to uh, adopt or go for a public hearing, so that uh, in case this zoning drags out, we won't miss the moratorium. So we, we worked on something stopgap, okay? But, go ahead. Thank you. Thank you very much. Roland, just, I'm, I'm sorry if I can interrupt for one second. Yes. So just to follow up what Supervisor Cazari said, so we, we worked on, I mentioned it to a couple of residents already, we worked on, just in case, we have a six month moratorium, and, and if we need to do another one, we can do it, that's not a problem but we want to work in conjunction with the master plan. So what we decided to do was to work on a standalone um, prohibition against the battery and solar farms uh, here in the town of Carmel. Yeah. And then we'll have a public hearing on that, I think, on, on October 16th. Um, and then once that passes, we will then incorporate that language specifically and what a lot of people were talking about tonight into the, into the draft master plan. So we wanted to do two things at the same time that we were able to do, but. Plus, 
Plus, I know, I know that there were going to be a lot of people probably speaking about it tonight, so we wanted to make sure that we got out in front of it and just let everybody know what we were thinking about and what we are planning to do. Okay. okay. Good evening, Supervisor Kazari and nice town to board you. members. Thank you for allowing me the opportunity to come up here and speak to you. Uh, I'd like to open up by just thanking you so much for the hard work that you guys have put into this thing to get it to where it is now. We came here six or seven months ago, as you know, and we don't need to rehash the history, but it was yeah, quite a, some raucous nights. Yeah, don't, um, don't bring it up. And quite honestly, we've gone from the very beginning to, I don't say we're at the end, till the I's are dotted and the T's are crossed. However, we've covered a ton of ground, and in my opinion, we're making great advances. Your definition of the tier one, tier two, and your allowances is more in line with something that uh, I don't want to see any of these batteries, but if they're going to put something in there, it's the smaller set. Uh, you know, we can't have this large set. I don't want. I don't want them at all. I don't want them at all. I said I don't want them at all. Who wants the batteries? Nobody. Shh, don't. Nobody. An out of town. An out of town company. Please wants don't them. don't yell at don't yell at Roland, please. He's and, sensitive. And who said nuclear? Who said nuclear? I said nuclear. I'm a nuclear. Supervisor for 40 years. I know about nuclear. It's a great thing, but I, but oh, but but. <laughs> okay, go. You got five. Minutes let let me now. say the fact that you're eliminating this large, huge industrial complex is a benefit to all of us. Your town, my town. I'm on the other side of the wall, and uh, uh, as I said, until the eyes are dotted, the T's are crossed. We're not there, but we're making great progress. I am an electrician uh, 50 years. And you could not give me lithium-ion battery storage in my house. I wouldn't do it. It's just, it's, it's too dangerous. We just saw what happened down in, in, in White Plains where the, 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 car the, the, the car accident, what a tragedy. It didn't have to happen. If that was gasoline, the chances are pretty good it wouldn't have happened. And then beyond that, um, the only thing I'd like to also do is uh, give the rest of my time to Alicia because I think she's got something well, more she's important speak some to more. say. She's got, she's got I, time. I, I said... Everybody has already mentioned all the other things I wanted to speak about, so I would, I would yield my time to Alicia. But we don't if, do it that way, but she'll get time to speak again. Okay, don't thank worry. you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Lauren? <laughs> it's been a minute, Lauren. I heard you guys missed me. You did. We did. Um, but your husband was here watching he was. every time. <laughs> he had to represent us. Yeah. Um, Lauren Roslin from Mayapac. Um, as luck would have it for you, um, I have been sick and without a voice, so I'm going to keep my comments quite short. <laughs> um, so when reading the new zoning code, I was happy to see that Tier 2 best facilities were prohibited in the town of Carmel. This sends a clear message to all that we will not tolerate dangerous, unproven technology in our town. I started my comments last spring by trying to explain that we don't want these in our backyards, but we also don't want them in your backyards or in anyone's backyard. They have no place near our senior citizens. They shouldn't be anywhere near our schools or the places we buy our groceries. They shouldn't impact our local businesses and they shouldn't ever be placed in a residential area. I think back to the beginning of the month when a smaller sized facility caught fire in Escondido, California. There were mandatory evacuations and hold in place orders and school was canceled. And this facility was in an industrial area. Imagine if it weren't, imagine if it were in your neighborhood or 200 feet from your child. The only logical decision is to ban them so that we can rest easy for the moment knowing they will not be allowed here. The proposed code was drafted years ago and was the clear vision of the town of Carmel. This is not a new idea or something that popped up last spring. Our town knew these facilities had no place here. And had it been passed, we probably wouldn't be in the position we are in. So to that point, there should be no reason to allow this public hearing to continue past tonight. Let's prioritize the health and safety of our community. Let's show the world that we will prevent the establishment of these facilities in our neighborhoods now and in the future. Let's ensure that our community remains a place that we are proud to call home. Let's give our residents the little bit of protection we can, and let's do it right now. 
not next week or next month, today. Thank you, Lauren. Um, I just also just, I, you know, you talked a little bit about, about things dragging on. Um, so just for the record, I'm pretty disappointed that there wasn't a second on the master plan. I do see that there are residents that think that things should be, you know, changed or stricken. I get it. I get it. But this has been out there for years and years and years. Um, so, you know, it's, it's just frustrating to have it continue. Um, and that's also why in my comments tonight I talked about, about this not dragging out any longer. Um, I'm sure people know that addendums can be made to the zoning code at any time. So, um, and when it's important to the town board or when it's important to residents, those, those addendums are made. So I think it's time to, to show everybody that this is gonna be done and it's gonna be done now. Thank you, Lauren. Lauren? Stephanie? So what, so what was not seconded tonight was the adoption of the comprehensive plan Correct. of the master plan. Right. So the master plan encompasses both the comprehensive plan and the zoning changes. Right. So it will be uh, adopted, but there will be some changes made to the comprehensive plan part of it. So it's not dragging along because okay. we still have to finish even if we adopted that tonight, the, the remainder zoning was not gonna be completed tonight okay. because of the changes that we wanted to hear um, or proposals that people in the public had made. So okay. that's, why it's, it, that's why it happened. But we still have, don't forget, we have what we just announced, okay. plus we have the moratorium in place too. So right. we're covered I know. in many facets. In many facets. Thank, thank, you for, thank you for coming out. Stephanie Azadian, please. Good evening, my name is Stephanie Azadian. Um, I live in Somer, so thank you for giving me um, the opportunity to address the board tonight. I am here to discuss the proposed revisions to the Carmel Zoning Codes. First, I would like to start off by addressing section 156-25, which is specific to battery energy storage systems. I fully support this addition to the Zoning Code. Banning battery energy storage systems will help pr protect community safety, preserve the environment, and help maintain the quality of life for all residents. Additionally, many local governments, specifically Somers, North Salem, Mount Pleasant, and North Castle, have taken extra steps towards maintaining control over large-scale battery storage systems by creating a definition specific to the word public utility. The definition is as follows. Any person, firm, corporation or governmental agency duly authorized to furnish to the public under governmental regulation, electricity, gas, water, sewage disposal and treatment, steam, cable or communication service. This definition shall not bestow any special status or standing not already provided by state or federal law. This definition does not include battery energy storage systems or similar facilities. Objectively, the thought behind creating this definition is to ultimately strengthen the town's position on these facilities and make it very clear to the town enforcement officer what the actual permitted use is under public utility. By creating this definition, it leaves no room for interpretation. I would like to see Carmel implement this definition within section 156-8 titled definitions of their new zoning codes. Lastly, I would like to touch on section 156-97, supplemental notice requirements. I personally feel that this code is lacking transparency and needs to be updated so the residents of the town are aware of what is actually going on. The little signs in the ground are not informative and more than half the time not even visible. A perfect example of this was the proposed battery storage facility on Miller Road. This applicant had a proposal in front of the board for four years before a single resident was made aware. This is unacceptable and goes against the framework of your new updated master plan which focuses heavily on transparency within the town. The need for open communication between local government and residents has never been more vital and the community deserves to be informed and engaged. These notices must reach everyone within the community, whether it is through digital platforms, social media, community bulletins, or possibly even door-to-door -door outreach when talking about industrial-sized facilities. Enhancing the town's notification policy will ensure transparency for the community, which is clearly lacking after listening to all the residents tonight. Overall, this will help residents stay informed and engaged. 
In conclusion, these zoning codes have been in the works for over five years now. It is important that all board members take in all the comments suggested tonight and vote in favor of these codes. Thank you. Thank you, Stephanie. And just, just in, in full transparency, I spoke to Stephanie over the weekend. We saw each other. She sent me that definition uh, that I think it was North Salem, Steph, that had so, and right, of the public utility definition, and um, she sent that over to me yesterday, and I will forward it on to the rest of the town board for consideration for a new definition for public utility. Thank so thank you. Oh, Sal uh, Cognetta. And Mr. Butler, we saw storm off, so um, Scott Morelli? Moriel. Moriel. Uh, name is Scott Moriello, 17 Lounsbury Drive, Somers. Thank you so much for the opportunity to speak here tonight. Um, I just want to commend you on taking necessary steps to prevent this reckless and irresponsible project in our towns. Um, please, please, we need to see it through all the way until uh, the property owners decide to tell Equinor, we no longer want uh, you building this in our towns because money is not as important as the safety of our families and the reputation of our towns. Um, that may mean another moratorium, more change to local codes, uh, a battle with the state, but it seems like you guys are already prepping for it, so uh, mm -hmm. it's great to hear. Um, uh, we also hope that uh, any new members of the board would pledge their support to protecting our towns uh, from this profit scheme project. Um, this is how democracy is supposed to work. Uh, we the people came to the local government. The local government listened to our rational concerns about safety, uh, and the government was responsive to the people. Uh, any candidate for state office that does not uh, put a halt to this project is going to have a hard time staying in office. Um, we know they have green energy goals, uh, but this project is too big and too close to homes and businesses and daycare centers. Projects of this size are being put up on land with old power plants. That's where they should be, right? Places where people bought their property and realized it was next to a power plant that holds a potential risk. Um, uh, state government must recognize the facility is simply not common sense. Over 3,000 people see that this is not safe and we will focus our attention on those politicians who support this reckless project. So thank you again. Thank you for coming. <laughs> Mr. Nowak. Hi, members of the board. Good evening. I'm Michael Nowak, Austin Road. Um, I commend you. We have come a long way from a few months ago, so thank you for everything, and um, we appreciate it. Okay, so you guys are owed some credit there, okay? Um, it was mentioned earlier that the zoning uh, portion of the code and the master plan is being brought up to update its uh, standards in modern day times. And ha as has been mentioned earlier, um, I submitted a letter with regards to public notice and would like to see that that be brought f uh, forward in this because as been mentioned, uh, submitting a notice at time of submission you know, it's not really fair when review time takes multiple months for an application and then it's before a board eight months after and no one has any idea on it, all right? I also implore the board, as mentioned before, to formulate a emergency services task force. You have a grand master plan and comprehensive plan here with zoning with major goals. Um, you had a project before you and there was miscommunication and the dishevelment. I think it's important for you all to bring these team players together from the police, fire, EMS, building department, other one or two entities on major projects like this, especially if you're gonna be talking about um, extending housing, um, boutique hotels um, on the waterfront. Might not be able to get a ladder um, truck in there. You know, EMS may not be able to reach it, you know, so these things are important. I also implore the board to set up a code section. I'm not sure if it's in there with regards to um, a special consultant when projects are before the board. 
Okay, many municipalities do set up an escrow fund to provide specialized review by special consultants, whether it's planners, whether it's um, energy consultants, environmental consultants. So I would implore the board to set up an escrow account and code language where the boards can do that. Furthermore, with regards to lead agency and approval authority, as mentioned before, I would like to see you all take the lead on special permits and other permits that make a difference, all right? It's been mentioned here by one of the board members at the planning board. The zoning code gives a lot of discretion and authority to them. Who's admitted by your own planning board member? You as trustees should have a lot more control over what's going on here. I thank the planning board. They have their role, and I respect that. But you all are final decision makers here. You all make the decisions, okay? And you should have that approval authority over large projects, either over certain acreage or special use permits or certain things of that nature, okay? So once again, thank you for everything and look forward to revisions. And um, one last comment on the official map. It is very large due to the acreage of Putnam, well, the town. Um, and I know you have to have an official map, but would it be possible to break that up into quadrants or somehow where you're able to zoom in on certain areas? Because it's a little hard when you're looking at the current map existing, it's really hard to find. And you don't want to have that ambiguity, you know, in the future. So thank you. George Calcadini, I am uh, one of the officers, vice president of Willowwood Gun Club. I am also Willowwood's attorney. I am also the attorney for Putnam County uh, Firearms Owners Association. I'm here in all three of those capacities. Uh, I have also uh, prepared a letter I'd like to hand up and officially make uh, part of the record. There's multiple copies there, uh, but I will uh, briefly go over that. Uh, a lot of my uh, comments are going to be somewhat redundant with the uh, statements made by the gentleman for the town. other gun club in town, so I will try and keep it brief. Uh, I agree with them that either the section on rod and gun clubs should be taken out entirely or alternatively that there be a provision, a sentence added, indicating that the existing gun clubs are permitted as of right in the uh, low density uh, residential zone. Either one of those would be acceptable. What is not acceptable is leaving the language in here that could possibly be interpreted, and it would be interpreted if a gun club, let's say uh, Willowwood wanted to come in and uh, replace the existing storage trailers with a barn. That would then put us, in, the town would very likely argue that that would put us into a special use permit as to that expansion. These provisions in here about special use permits are really designed to keep any gun club out. There can be no misunderstanding. This ordinance absolutely is absolutely, totally, 100% anti-Second Amendment. It is going to absolutely preclude any new gun club. Is a gun club likely in this town? A new gun club? Probably not, but this ordinance absolutely guarantees there will never ever be another gun club. Uh, some of the things are just absolutely ridiculous. One of the gentlemen said, Mr. Code said, uh, about the 50 acres. There's no rationale for that. You could have a pistol range uh, with less, certainly less than 50 acres. Uh, some of the provisions about discharge of uh, tracer rounds. I suspect that the person that drafted this doesn't know that there are forms of tracer rounds other than incendiary rounds. In fact, uh, uh, we sometimes train, I'm, I'm a shotgun shooter, competitive shotgun shooter. There are uh, rounds that are made uh, the same as the uh, glow sticks that the kids use at uh, concerts. They snap them and scuba divers use them to put to their tanks. They're, they're just a chemical reaction within the plastic tube. Uh, there's no fire danger as a result of those. And quite frankly, if a club designs deems that their range is safety for an incendiary round, that's a matter for them. A lot of clubs in the area do not allow incendiary rounds, but it's based on their expertise and knowledge of this. The drafters of this ordinance do not understand the ramifications of tracer rounds and how you deal with tracer rounds. 
Uh, there, are, there are occasions when tracer rounds are perfectly acceptable. Um, it shouldn't be in the ordinance of blanket prohibition. Likewise, there shouldn't be a blanket prohibition on uh, hours uh, on Sunday. Uh, this ordinance uh, says uh, on Sundays and state and federal holidays, it would limit the hours of operation from noon to six. Uh, those are the most uh, important hours for any kind of recreational club. Uh, it's really a ridiculous and overly restrictive uh, provision. Uh, alcoholic beverages. Now, Willowwood, if you touch a gun in any other gun club that I know, you take one sip of alcohol and touch a firearm, you're out. But once the guns are packed away, safely in your case, and you're, you're having a social event, why can't you have an adult beverage? After, after a shooting competition and all the guns are packed away and safe. This is nonsense. It's, it's again, trying to treat us either like children or just unduly burden uh, the, the clubs. Dogs, there are a lot of clubs uh, that uh, do hunting. Willowwood, we don't do hunting, but a lot of clubs do um, bird hunting and they keep dogs on premises for that. This has a total prohibition on dogs and keeping dogs at the club. It shouldn't be there. Uh, I've addressed a number of these things, and I know I'm running out of time, but this ordinance is, is very defective, very anti-Second uh, Amendment, should not pass. And by the way, the, the case that you were talking about, that was in the 80s. It was my club, and uh, it was by the appellate division. That's never being reversed. So uh, thank you for your time, and I would uh, thank you for your attention to this matter. And Thank you for your provisions. knowledge. Thank you. Appreciate Thanks, George. Adriana, Adriana Wise. Hi, uh, my name is Adriana Wise and I live in the town of Carmel. Uh, thank you for letting me speak. So uh, I will join everybody ahead of me who spoke against uh, these two provisions. Uh, the one regarding the battery bank on pages 68 through 69, uh, which would be the paragraph 156.25 as well as the one regarding uh, the um, gun clubs, pages 142 to 144, provision or paragraph number uh, 1563626. I think that the text of both provisions should be taken out entirely. So again, um, I would like to add a little bit of trivia to um, the part about the uh, dangers of a battery farm in a residential area. Um, I'm actually looking uh, online at an article from NBC News uh, which states that not only that there is, there, there is a danger of, this, um, of the battery bank overheating, creating explosions, but once that fire happens, it presents additional problems for firefighters. So this is an additional challenge um, in, uh, in fighting this. Um, and just to give a few examples, the article starts citing a number of uh, past, um, you know, recent accidents. Um, last July, an electric transit bus in Connecticut burst into flames while parked at a depot, oh. and this is a much smaller scale uh, battery. Um, a month later, an electric scooter sparked a fire inside a New York City apartment that killed a five-year-old girl and a 36-year-old woman. And last month, a fire believed to, be, uh, to have been caused by the batteries in an electric scooter engulfed a multi-family home in Brockton, Massachusetts. So these things happen much more often than we think. And again, once they do happen, fighting that fire is much more challenging. So again, I'm a no on both the battery bank in its entirety, a no on the prohibitions of, um, or the limitations to gun clubs. So the 50 acres, the uh, 50, uh, 500 feet, and so forth. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. Larry? Thank you for your time, and thank you all for serving on this committee with the uh, planning board. We started this eight years ago with Susie, myself, and Jonathan. I'm a local resident, part of the Chamber of Commerce. I'm a local realtor, investor, developer in the town of Carmel and Somers. Um, a lot of hard work went into this. Thank you, Bonnie. The battery plant doesn't belong there. Not. It's industrial. 
end of conversation. The gun clubs deserve to be here. I mean, everybody enjoys them. My parents have been there. We all moved to the country to go fishing, hunting, and live here. Um, one thing I do want to bring up, we've been talking about parking downtown. We always need parking. If downtown is going to be improved, and this is from a business perspective, if you do not have parking, people will not come. This is in New York City. You don't park five blocks away and enjoy the sidewalk and going around and browsing and looking at people. People will just drive up and go to the mall or go somewhere else. So if we do not have parking, you're going to have a gridlock. It's going to affect your restaurants now and in the future. In addition, there is that one parking lot over by um, Clark Place. The county owns half of it. It should be acquired by the town. We have spoke about that extensively. The other thing I wanted to talk about is downtown redevelopment. Downtown will not be redeveloped unless you allow density of four stories. You cannot knock down a one or two story building, rebuild it with today's costs and expect it to be economically viable. That's because you do not have the revenue to support the taxes on the structure, the construction of the structure. So I suggest that this be addressed and allow four stories. Also make it easier to get approvals. Lately we got an approval for a building lot, 18 months for Board of Health approval. These are three and four year projects for one home. A large project can be 10 or 20 years. We've been working on this plan eight years. If downtown is going to be redeveloped in my lifetime, these zoning has to be put in here that it is easier to redevelop. Also that if we're going to have clusters, it should be allowed on basically almost any lot size because it's going to be reviewed by five boards. Stop putting over restrictions on everything. Those are some of the key points. I apologize. I was at a white sale board meeting. They're rebuilding the dock, spending a million too. They asked me to mention do not put that structure for the shed for the town next to white sale and there should be some kind of buffer between the white sale condominiums and the park for noise, sight, etc. And that's pretty much all I have to say. Thank you for serving. Thank you for coming. Hello, thank you so much. My name is Tara, my husband's name is Michael, we live in Mahopac. Some of you know us because we have been pretty vocal over the past five years of a, a, lots of situations that we're dealing with. But we are in support of, of what you are proposing for the shoreline activity piers and docks as well as the short term housing. I would like to only speak from my experience because we are all speaking here from our own experience. And we pay taxes for a residential single family house among other single family houses. But next to us, we have 15 boats, nine jet skis, which basically equates to about a multi-family house with 20 units. And from about seven o'clock in the morning till 10 o'clock at night, there's nonsense because they're using it as a campsite. And everyone on this board is very much aware because I've spoken to all of you, most of you individually, but my frustration is that I've had police reports. I've, I've you know, had to call the state. We know that they're out of compliance. I have the letters here stating that they're 100% out of compliance. I had boats parked in front of my house for three years, so I couldn't even enter into my own lakefront property that we're paying a hefty tax bill for. And no one seems to be able to do anything. I've called board members, I've called councilmen, I've called the state, and they're pointing at each other saying, hey, I don't have jurisdiction, oh, I, oh, I can't do this. So what can we do? So I have to deal with people trespassing, pissing on my lawn, frankly, this happened, knocking down my fence, driving drunk, cursing at me, like, it's insane. I once, they had a party next door to me once and asked me if they could have my Wi-Fi. I was like, so they can stream a movie. It was like insane. So my point is, is that I understand that like, 
there are, you know, people want to have boats here, but there has to be some rules and regulations for folks in a residential neighborhood. So I'm asking you guys, like, what can we do? I notice that things don't get passed very fast here. Can there be something? I know we spoke with Assemblyman Matt Slater, and we discussed maybe doing an addendum or some sort of bill that can be passed sooner, because this is our daily life of harassment, which frankly is unacceptable. And if it was any one of you people's here dealing with what we have to deal with on a day-to-day -day basis, yeah. no one would put up for it. And I've been like the crazy woman screaming and yelling. And, you know, and then to, to my left, I have two illegal marinas. So it's basically like friends and families and parties. And when they do, you know, hookah, whatever, the, not, you know what I mean, the tiki day, it's like a real disaster there. So there is no relaxation in my home. And then on the right, I've got someone airbnb being two doors down, so there's new people every three to four days. So can we find a middle ground so everyone can be happy? I'm not saying get rid of everybody, but the state law is, and it's a New York State lake, that, we, that you're allowed to have five boats. Why is there 15, seven, nine, 10? Why are people abusing the lake for financial gain and everyone's just saying that's okay? But then I'm asked to pay taxes and live there and have to deal with being harassed. So I just ask you guys to step in and get something done because Robert, I would have loved if you were my neighbor and you bought that house and you were to, to maybe you still can because you would see what goes on. <laughs> and you would be on board and hopefully be able to get something done. So I'm just asking you guys to please take that into consideration. I know it's hard to get things passed and other people have other opinions, but something needs to be done for the residents who live there who are law-abiding citizens. Thank you. Thank you. So can we get a motion to close the public hearing? Uh, Wait, oh, not to... closing it. Can we get a motion to? No, we have, we have some more people. I have a to speak. Oh, you're on the uh, the vehicle and traffic one. You wanted to speak on this? No, come, come up, please, Walter. I would think you're more about the Airbnb, the not place. the vehicle and traffic. It's... Sometimes that happens. Go ahead. First of all, I want to uh, state uh, in due respect for the building department. I've always got. because he said he never got inspections on things, but they were always good for me. Um, so it's been about a year now I've been dealing with this short-term rental on my street. I reached out to the building department initially, but they have no laws to go by to pr protect us. Um, over the last year, there's been over 100 rentals. 100 rentals in this house. We have three houses on our street. My future uh, son-in-law, myself, and this house that belongs to somebody who lives in Long Island. They're never even there. Over 100 rentals with over four to six people. That's average. It sometimes goes to 10. That's over 400 people that have gone down this little tiny private road. I don't know who they are. They're strangers coming in. The, they could be murderers, they could be rapists. Based on the type of parties that are going on there, it wouldn't surprise me, to be honest with you. I came here in August, uh, July. I was, yeah, you had a meeting in July 10th, I believe it was. I came here. You said you were gonna deal with this issue. I wanna know what's going on. We still are dealing with this on a daily, daily basis. My, my daughter and her companion, they're gonna move out. They're gonna leave. And they've been residents there here their whole lives. I've only been here 20 years. So uh, I just wanna know what's gonna go on here because I'm sick and tired of it. And I own three properties, I pay a lot of taxes, and I'm gonna leave. Unless you do something. The about Airbnbs it. are addressed in this master plan. We just well, have to get to Please that. tell me what it is. I haven't seen, you know, I've looked at the do original you know it, draft. It Fine. has to be on a county road, and you are on a private road. It's not going to be allowed on private your private road. When, yeah. though? When? 
when, oh, when this well, is, gets it when this is there's passed. There's people in the house as we speak right now who no, I don't even outside, know who they are. Outside, Plus, it has to be an owner-occupied house, so that's the other part that's going to... Yeah, they I'm won't sorry. be able to live in Long it Island. It owner-occupied, the house. They so it's your there. house, and you rent the house you live in for somebody else to live there. When is this going to take place? As soon as this is adopted. When is this going to be adopted? I don't know. Yes. Why can't there be... Look, our lives are being threatened daily. Why can't you do something about this? Why can't you place a moratorium? There should be no, no short-term rentals on private roads. I mean, it just doesn't make yeah. sense. It doesn't work. It's impacting the people that are living there. Yeah, we, we, can, we can look. We'll, we'll discuss about Please. a moratorium or something. There are yeah. people there right now, yeah. I think from Virginia. I have no idea where they're from. No idea. Not only that, but now they're going, because we live next to Sycamore Park, Yep. They're going off of the dock, which if you want to call it their dock, with a boat, and they use the facilities at Sycamore Park. They go on the dock. They, nobody's there. There's no lifeguards. It's not being monitored. I monitor the park. I call the police all the time if I see, because I keep an eye on the park, because I can see everything that's going on. I told D N uh, Nina, they're using the park. There's no one there to monitor them. Yeah. So I got to know, when is this going to change? Otherwise, I'm going to change. I'm going to leave. I'll take my three properties, sell everything, and maybe even write a nice article in a newspaper about this. Alex? I just have a few words. Uh, I've been, my name's Alexander Aquilino. I've been Walter's neighbor for 10 years. I reside in, where I reside with his daughter, Louisa. We both graduated from Maypeck High School, and I've been a long, a lifetime resident of Maypeck. Never have I thought I would have to move. The short-term rental or Airbnb directly next to us has been nothing but a nightmare. Every weekend and most times during the week, strangers are in and out, throwing everything from parties, funerals, family reunions, bachelor parties, weddings, and more. We live on a private road, and this has completely destroyed our peace and privacy. We share a driveway with these strangers on a daily basis, and despite the amount of complaints to the owners and property manager, nothing is being done they simply do not care about our lives or well-being. We experience constant noise, unnecessary traffic, and trash issues. This isn't a way to live at all. We need something to happen right now. Short-term re rentals do not belong on private roads, period. There are bylaws for bed and breakfast establishments under Carmel, New York Code, section 156-45. What constitutes as a bed and breakfast establishment they both serve short-term visitors, and Airbnb is basically an unmanaged and unregulated bed and breakfast. Something needs to be done. This has de deteriorated my mental health tremendously. Walter showed good citizenship to the town when he first moved here. He donated his cruise time to the building of the new Mayapec Library. I walk up and down Long Pond every spring and collect garbage. We, ca we care about our community and what's happening needs to stop now. Short-term rentals do not belong on private roads. Thank you. Could you, could you just uh, tell the clerk your last name? And they're both Juniper Lane. Uh, Aquilino. Trail. Alexander. And also, what, what determines a short term rent? Not two weeks, not a month. Only long term. Long term, because there's, we still have the same problem of strain. As I said, there's over 100 rentals since this started when I first spoke, spoke to Mike. August yeah. last year. Over yep. 100 rentals, that's 400 minimum, and sometimes there's 20 people in that. Yeah, there were 30 the, the, people the there last The board will discuss weekend. it. We'll, we'll, we'll work on it. I know, you said that last time. Well, we thought we'd finish the zoning, so we'll look at what we can Please. do in the interest. Please. Please. We're going home tonight to strangers that may be blocking my driveway. Yeah, they constantly park in our marked spots. Get him up at night because he's right next door blasting music. Yeah, it's you can call stop. the police, call I know. Police. Yeah, I know. <laughs> We we'll, don't care. We'll have a long-term rental. We'll, we'll work on it. Please, we will. Please. Yes. Please. Sorry, I, Walter. I, I yes. So, can we get a motion to keep the zoning open until October sixteenth? Yeah, I was going to say or any adjourned day because because okay. as I said earlier, I cannot make the sixteenth. I already have a planned. Um, I'll, I'll be away. I would like to be here for the final draft or, you know, when we vote on it. Um, so we can talk. So whatever language you need to, to say to keep it open. Yeah, 
Okay. Open for written comment. Right yeah. now, it's either going to be October 16th or before, hopefully. So, yeah, do you want to speak? Yeah. Marie, you wanted to get up and speak? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. So, by October 16th, we'll have be our issue. Oh. oh, just Yeah, just we so should. Uh, the oh, probably, it should will probably there. be, okay. if, it, if it gets passed at that point, then your issue will be dealt with. Marie? Good evening, guys. Good evening, Marie. I I here to compliment you because you know what happened to me on Monday, and you got involved. Whether it be just make a phone call, but by the time I got up there, they knew that I was in your office. But you did do something. That's more than I can say that Kenny and whatever the the last board did which has done nothing. Mike helped me Monday, too. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mike. Except mm -hmm. one thing, that second picture had a piece of paper on the floor. Guess what? I went down my street today, and I took pictures. There was um, a Newport empty pack of cigarettes in front of the house, two doors down. Do you know when I came home later on today, I found it in, in front of my house. Oops. So he better not come back with another, I, it's the fun, I took pictures. Yes, it was turned on. Okay. Are they gonna pull a stunt? I don't know. But I wanted to thank you. Oh, thank you. Because you did do something. It doesn't matter what you did, even if it was just a damn phone call, you did. I only wanna say one thing about this best thing. The back of my house is all woods, other than that one house. From there, all the way down, at the end of Silvergate, is all woods, which then goes on to uh, history. Right? I can't even say it. Okay? So, I, it, if it, there's a fire there, it goes up. It, it's, I, I'm, I mean, I don't want it. I don't want it there. So, I'm going to agree with everybody that I don't want it there. But I needed it. Thank you. Just the same way people complain about you, I came to compliment. <coughs> Thank you. So could we get a second on that motion? Oh, make it again. Oh. For written comment. For no, no, for public. For Just public. keep it open. open. Oh, open, but, open. Okay. okay. But Greg was saying that if it's it's not the 16th, that he's saying it can't be the 9th because right. there's not enough time, time, so it would have to be after the 16th. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So it would be November. So somebody. So it's open till October 16th or any I think November 6th. Yes. Okay. Possibly. Same time. We do the 16th. Huh? We do the 16th. Yeah. Yeah. So. So. Who's well, seconding I'm, it? I'll second. Yeah, I'm not because I'm not going to be here, and I'd like to be involved. Is all in favor? Yes. Yes. No. You're in favor? Yeah. You in favor of I, keeping I, it like open, I, 16th I said, or 16th? I, I, I would like to be there for the 16th. I, I, I can. I already have a planned thing that I planned a year ago. So then we can So I was asking to, to, to move it so where I could be there. But if you guys, well, it, it only takes three. So if you guys want well, to no, do that, he, go well, ahead. Greg is saying it could be any day after. So if we wanted to do something on the 23rd, it, we have the flexibility to do it on the 23rd. That's why I just want to get it done. So I just want to get it done. We have to, I, I, I. I yes. three, four. You're good. It's unanimous. Okay. <laughs> Great. I have no idea. It may, so, so I, I have we're no looking idea. at the 16th, so but right, we don't know. It may be the next weekend. Right now, there's no town board meeting scheduled for the 23rd, but we may add it, but we'll have to notice it. So it can't be before the October 16th, but it could be any day after. October 16th. So we'll discuss, we'll figure it out, and we will make sure we blast it out to everybody and inform everybody when the, the, the meeting would be. 10. So what you'll do is, if you decide at some point between now and the 16th that it's going to be a later date, you'll set the, the public hearing by another resolution. Notice, publication, be up on the website, be up on the bulletin board, all that. Newspaper. 
it's not, you're going to have to publish it. Yeah. Okay. Well, we have publish to publish any changes. It would be in the yes. newspaper, yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay. So, whatever date it is. So the, the third 23rd, 30th. public hearing is uh, for the proposed local law amending chapter 147 of the town code of the town of Carmel entitled vehicle and traffic. This is uh, bringing back the stop signs that we did uh, on Wixom Pond and Bucks Hollow Road. Um, so, motion to open? Yes, can I get a motion to open that? So moved. Get a second on that? Second. And all three of us are in favor. Okay. She waited. Is there anybody here speaking? No. So, seeing how we already did the stop sign on Bloomer Road and Wixom Pond, can I waive the reading of the yeah. Okay. So moved. Is anyone opposed? No. No. And all in favor of waiving? Oh. Say second. Oh, second. I'm sorry. All in favor? Aye. 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 So is anyone here to speak about the proposed stop signs on Wixon Pond and Cook and Bucks Hollow Road and Bloomer? No? Oh. Nope. Not. Yeah? Please just state your name and where you live for uh, the clerk, sir. Ron Scarano, Mayor Pack, New York, or Mohawk Pack. Uh, yes, we mentioned the ones on Bucks Hollow Road and uh, Bloomer. Bloomer. Is there any way we can put another stop sign on Horton Drive and Bloomer? So uh, Bucks Hollow. I'm sorry. So, so that let's wait like, for what transpires from this stop sign. Could, yeah. Like I had said to the gentleman that lives on the corner there. Yeah, Sal. Also, Sal. Right. The, the, you're very close to the intersection on Union Valley Road. I know he says that people speed, but it's a very short distance, so it's people not, will be... Not really that short. It's well, a good, it's a good old, old, I say a half a mile, if not more. Oh, it's not a half a mile. Oh, yes, From yes. Union Valley Road to... From, from uh, Horton you, Drive to... Um, to Union Valley? To Union Valley. Not Union Valley, the other way. Oh, Boomer. yes, but... That's the way you want But they, they have to slow down for that stop sign. Yeah, but it's crush. way down. They go by his house at 50, 60 miles an hour. You've got to well, see the way they go by his well, house. Well, that's because they're coming all the way from... No, no, the other way. They're coming by, past the firehouse, heading toward Bloomer Road. And they're getting up to 50 miles an hour, oh, right? yes. Well, oh. we're going to have the police go out and study it again. Well, they've done been there. They've put radar there, but... No, they'll study it after they put the stop sign up. Oh, in, in between. At, put another at one At Bloomer, there. and then we'll know if it's warranted then. Then they'll yeah, be... Yeah, uh, because I... I I live around that corner, and yeah. I hear the cars, and they come around the corner onto uh, Bucks Hollow Road, and they go flying yeah. down past the firehouse, and they keep going. I told Sal yeah. that we'll have the police and the highway revisit it after this stop sign goes up at Bloomer and Bucks okay. Hollow, and, and we'll see. But if the highway department and the police department determine that they don't think it's warranted, it, yeah. you know, well, we're not they, just going to put it up. They usually sit there in the firehouse and with the radar. radar yeah. yeah, so, okay, thank you. No, thank you very much. So, yeah, so can Make a motion. Yeah, I'll make a motion to pass the uh, proposed local law, which would be number six of 2024, amending chapter 147 of the town code of the town of Carmel entitled vehicle and traffic. Second? Uh, second. Second. Can we please get a roll call? Councilman Kearns? Yes. Councilman McDonough? Councilman Lombardi? Aye. Supervisor Kazari? Yes. Thank you. Um, so we have to get a motion to close the public hearing on the vehicle and traffic. So we voted. Oh, we're done? We voted? We're done? We voted. So. All right. So, uh, a motion to open the voting meeting. There you go. So moved. So moved. Second. And all in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, first, I have to get a motion, please, to accept the town board meeting minutes from August 7th, the 14th, and September 4th. So moved. Second. Um, Lombardi, seconded by Kearns. And then all in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Got it. Thank you. Uh, the first resolution is uh, attendance to a seminar. 
uh, resolved at the Town Board of the Town of Carmel hereby authorizes Town of Carmel Fire Inspector Joe Wilikowski to attend training at the Capital District Conference in Albany, New York, being held on October 7, 2024 through October 4, 2024, and be it further resolved that the Town Board of the Town of Carmel authorizes payment of reasonable and necessary expenses incurred in connection with uh, within and upon audit. I uh, offer this as read. Second. And can we get a roll call, please? Councilman Kearns? Yes. Councilman McDonough? Councilman Lombardi? So, uh, yes. Supervisor Kazari? Yes. Uh, the next resolution is acknowledging emergency repairs, Carmel Water and Sewer Districts. Uh, Councilman Kearns, could you read that one for us? Resolved the Town Board of the Town of Carmel acting as commissioners of the various water and sewer districts of the Town of Carmel hereby acknowledges the emergency performance of water and sewer district collection system, distribution system, and treatment facility repairs as fully detailed in the memorandum of Town Engineer Richard J. Franzetti, PE, to the Town Board dated September 5, 2024, as attached hereto and made a part thereof uh, for this resolution as read. We get a roll call, please. Councilman Kearns? Yes. Councilman McDonough? Councilman Lombardi? Aye. Supervisor Kazari? Yes. Number two passed. The third resolution is accepting proposal and authorizing installation of containment pad at Carmel Water District Number 8 Water Treatment Plant. Uh, Councilman Lombardi, could you read that? <clears throat> Whereas B&J Plumbing, operators of Carmel Water District Number 1, 8, 10, and 13, and Town Engineer Richard J. Franzetti, PE, have advised the Town Board of the Town of Carmel that the steel-coated cont containment pad for chemical bulk deliveries at Carmel Water District No. 8 water treatment facility is in need of repair. Now, therefore, be it resolved, the Town Board of the Town of Carmel act as commissioners of Carmel Water District No. 1, 8, 10, and 13, hereby accept and adopt the recommendations of Infomark LLC and the Town Engineer and accordingly authorize the replacement of said contaminated Containment, I'm sorry, containment piece by solid masonry made pack New York at a cost not to exceed $29,600 in accordance with the proposal dated September 5, 2024, and be it further resolved that upon presentation of insurance certificates and form acceptable to town attorney, the construction contain, container, the construction container within this authority may commence and be it further resolved, the Town Controller Marion Maxwell is hereby authorized to make any and all necessary budget revisions to effectuate said purchase transaction authorized herein. I offer this resolution as read. Second. Can you roll call again, please? Councilman Kearns? Yes. Councilman McDonough? Yes. Councilman Lombardi? Aye. Supervisor Kazari? Yes. Uh, the next resolution is accepting proposal and entry into agreement for collection of refuse, garbage, and recyclable material resolved that the town board of the town of Carmel hereby authorizes the entry into an agreement with AAA Carding and Rubbish Removal, Inc., Cortland Manor, New York, for the collection of refuse, garbage, and recycling material at various town and town sewer and water district facilities for a period commencing January 1, 2025, through and including December 31st, 2026, at the pricing contained within the memorandum of Town Engineer Richard J. Franzetti, PE, dated September 4, 2024, and be it further resolved that Town Supervisor Michael Cazari is hereby authorized to sign any and all necessary documents to accept said proposal, and be it further resolved that Town Comptroller Mary Ann Maxwell is hereby authorized to direct and directed to allocate the cost of said agreement over the respective water and sewer districts being served therein. I offer this as read. Second. Seconded by Councilman McDonough. Can we get a roll call again, please? Councilman Kearns? Yes. Councilman McDonough? Yes. Councilman Lombardi? Aye. Supervisor Kazari? Yes. Uh, the next resolution is authorizing payment of wages to employee number 2558. Councilman McDonough, could you read that yes. for us? Whereas on or about March 27, 2024, Town of Carmel employee number 2558 sustained an on-the-job injury to which he aforesaid employee is entitled to New York State workers' compensation benefits. And whereas Michael Stern, Highway Superintendent of the Town of Carmel, has advised the Town Board that the aforesaid employee is presently unable to work, to return to work duties. And whereas the Highway Superintendent has recommended 
extension of the aforesaid employees' wages pursuant to the terms and conditions of the Town of Carmel Employee Handbook, as well as the terms and conditions of the contract between the aforesaid employees' bargaining unit and the Town of Carmel. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Town Board of the Town of Carmel hereby authorizes the payment of wages to employee number 2558 for a period of an additional four months commencing October 1st, 2024 and terminating January 31st, 2025. I offer this resolution as read. Second. Can we get a roll call again, please? Councilman Kearns? Yes. Councilman McDonough? Yes. Councilman Lombardi? Aye. Supervisor Kasseri? Yes. Uh, next up is authorizing the award of a contract for purchase of bulk diesel fuel Town of Carmel Highway Department. Councilman Kearns, could you read that for us? Resolved that the Town Board of the Town of Carmel, upon the recommendation of Town of Carmel Highway Superintendent Michael Stern, hereby authorizes the award of bid contract for purchase of bulk diesel fuel for the Town of Carmel Highway Department for the period of commencing immediately through November 20, 2024 from Global Montello Group under New York State Office of General Services contract number PC69480, group number 5602, award number 23236. Uh, for this resolution is read. Second by McDonough. Can we get a roll call again, please? Councilman Kearns? Yes. Councilman McDonough? Yes. Councilman Lombardi? Aye. Supervisor Kazari? Yes. Uh, the number seven is a resolution declaring certain equipment obsolete and authorizing disposal. Councilman Lombardi, could you read that? <clears throat> Excuse me. Resolve the Town Board of Town of Carmel hereby declares Town of Carmel Highway Department Vehicle Number 8, a 2010 Ford Expedition, to be obsolete and authorizes its disposal in accordance with town law including but not limited to town law section 64-2-A. I offer this resolution as right. Second. And roll call one more time. Councilman Kearns? Yes. Councilman McDonough? Yes. Councilman Lombardi? Aye. Supervisor Kazari? Yes. Uh, number eight is authorizing the award of a bid Town of Carmel Highway Department resolved that the town board of the Town of Carmel hereby authorizes the award of the bid for rock crushing services Town of Carmel Highway Department through um, and including December 31st, 2024, to Liberty Bell Trucking, Holmes, New York, uh, according to New York State Municipal, General Municipal Law 103, uh, subsection 16, at a rate of $15 per ton. Oh, if this is red. Second. Can we get a roll call again? Councilman Kearns? Yes. Councilman McDonough? Yes. Councilman Lombardi? Aye. Supervisor Kazari? Yes. Um, and then finally, our resolution authorizing the scheduling of a public hearing. Resolved that the Town Board of the Town of Carmel hereby authorizes the scheduling of a public hearing at Town Hall, 60 McAlpin Avenue, Mahopac, New York, 10541 on Wednesday, October 16, 2024, at 7 p.m. or as soon thereafter that evening as possible on a proposed local law amending Chapter 156 of the Code uh, the Town of Carmel entitled Zoning, and be it further resolved that Town Clerk Alice Daly is hereby authorized and instructed to publish and post the necessary notices in the official newspapers of the Town of Carmel Town Bulletin Board regarding this uh, public hearing. I offer this as read. Second. Seconded by Lombardi. And all those in favor? Aye. 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 So, Alice, this will be some changes because of what was spoken of. Um, the proposed law, there'll be probably some changes. You okay, know, maybe that, the morning, then. maybe that 80 to okay. 600. And then, you know, we got to talk about that. Yeah. But we'll we'll discuss it with our consultant. Okay. Um. So we are up to closing the voting meeting. Can I get a motion to close so the voting? Second. And a second? second. Second. And all in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, Alice, for sitting through that. Thank you. Have that. a good night. Thanks, good night. Alice. Can someone make a motion to open up work session? So moved. Second. And second, and all in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> so, I guess we have to text Marianne? No, Marianne's here. You're hiding. <laughs> here. So, first, or the only two items on the uh, work session are both being presented by our town comptroller, Marianne Maxwell. 
Uh, first up is to consider the budget revisions June through August 2024. Marian. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, these are the budget revisions through August of 2024. Uh, number one, we're providing for the payout of accrued vacation time, a total of $4,446. Uh, within the Justice Court and the Comptroller's Office. Uh, number two, we're providing for the down payment of property and environmental site assessment. Um, the total is $134,600. Uh, those funds are coming from the capital uh, project fund balance. Uh, number three, we're providing for police uh, special equipment purchases and police youth camp um, from grant funding. So there's various grants that the police, police department have been awarded, um, so we're providing for the expenses that are covered from those grants. Um, number four, we're providing for a police vehicle repair from a third party insurance claim, ins excuse me, insurance claim. That's a total of $8,681. Number five, we're providing for the showcase of local artists with ex ex exhibition of outdoor sculptures from grant funding. So that was $500 that was awarded at the Red Mills Park. Uh, number um, six, we're providing for future purchases from funds received um, from vehicle auctions. So these were uh, auctions. We received money, monies from auctions, and we we're using those um, in the recreation department, the police department, and the highway department. Uh, number seven, we're transferring for uh, various expenses within the general fund. Uh, number eight, we're transferring for litigation, litigation legal expenses. Um, this is coming from the defense legal line of $15,000. Number on page two, transferring $90,000 into the police overtime line. This is coming from another police, police salary line. Uh, number 10, we're transferring for miscellaneous, miscellaneous police expenses within the general fund. Number 11, we're transferring for um, the police night out expenses. This is coming from the contingent account of $2,500. Uh, number 13, we're transferring for miscellaneous recreation expenses within the rec recreation budget. And number 14, we're transferring funds for, from the recreation budget to the, cap the airport capital fund to cover the playground to finish the installation of the playground at the airport, airport park. On page three, in the highway fund, we're providing for the capital improvements and repairs from FEMA aid. Uh, this is aid that is uh, due to the town from the July 2023 storm. Number 16, also in the highway fund, we're providing for the purchase of a Vactor uh, sewer cleaner. Uh, this uh, uh, piece of equipment is going to be transferred to the lead uh, capital fund, lead service line capital fund, uh, to assist with that project. Uh, number 17 in the highway fund, we're providing for the purchase of capital machinery from the sale of metal recycling. Also in the highway fund, we're transferring within the highway fund for miscellaneous ex expenses. And then we're transferring to cover the cost of the stone crushing expense. I believe that was just voted on uh, tonight. So we're transferring $80,000 into the general repair contractual line from various expenses in the highway fund. In the Lake Cassie Park District, the Tea Kettle Park District, and the uh, Lake Secor Park District, we're transferring within those funds to cover miscellaneous expenses. Um, and uh, I guess that's uh, frag, frag, Fragmites treatment. I guess that's some kind of lake, lake treatment. Uh, in the Water District funds, we're transferring to the Lead Capital Fund from the Water District funds. And we're also uh, treat, transferring within the water districts for the PF, PFOAs. Okay, those are all covered, being, being transferred within each specific water district. Um, in various water and sewer districts, on page five, we're transferring within those districts to cover various expenses, such as um, chemical expenses, other district expenses, and emergency repairs. On page uh, six, in sewer district number five, we are transferring, um, transferring and providing uh, $8,000 is gonna have to come from the fund balance in that district because there's not enough money within the district to cover the expenses that are over budget. 
in Sewer District 5 and also Sewer District 6, we're going to have to transfer $4,000 from that fund balance to cover expenses in that district. In the Carmel Lighting District, we're providing for the purchase of a, of a replacement street light. This is coming from an outside party insurance claim of $10,000. Uh, on, also on page 6, in the Special Drainage uh, Iguana Car Wash Capital Fund, we're providing for our capital project costs, and this is coming from approved borrowing of $200,000. Uh, the police grant, police grant funded technology. Uh, the police was awarded a grant, uh, a technology grant of $408,000. So we're providing for the technology equipment that's going to be used, you know, from the, the funds from that grant. So we're basically just putting the money into the technology uh, grant uh, equ equipment line. In the airport park, we're transferring and providing and transferring for the airport park playground installation cost. And the last one is the lead service line capital fund. We're providing for the capital project costs from approved borrowing and also the transfer that's coming from the water districts that I spoke about before. Um, I have two okay. Sure. Just, can you clarify the, the purchase of water for $85,000? I'm sorry? The purchase of water for $85,000. No, number 24. Water. Number 24. 24. 602-004. for the PFOAs, Marianne? Yes, yes. So that's, so that's money. So the purchase of water, that 85000 th that line, the purchase of water line, is for the New York City Water Board. That, that's the money that we pay the Water Board. There is excess money in there this year. So we're transferring money from that line, the excess that's in that line, to cover the cost of the PFOAs. So we're paying to use the water? We're, we're, we're just transferring. The, there's like a, bu a budget balance in that line. The, the, co the invoices that we're paying the city have gone down over the, you know, over, I'd say, the last two or three years. They've gone down. So we've been able to lower that budget. So we're basically we're using the excess that we, we are not paying that we're not paying the city to go towards the PFOAs. It's ridiculous that we even have to pay them. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, absolutely. It is. And then <laughs> um, it is, yeah. yeah. And then I guess number forty two is the that's for the unfunded mandate from the state, right? With the lead. That's the lead, yes. Cool. And the PFOAs too is an yeah, unfund, the unfunded, unfunded mandate. All from down from the yeah. state. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. Thank you. And, sure. and, and the feds don't leave them out. Yeah. 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 Uh, and then our next item is the LOSAP reports for the yes. ambulance and fire and yes. So these are the annual reports uh, for 2023 for our um, length of service award program with Carmel Ambulance, uh, Carmel Fire Protection Protection, Dis Protection District Number One, which is Mayapack Falls, and Protection District District Number Two, which is Mahopack. Uh, so in Carmel Ambulance District. Uh, the, this fund has done well. Um, the, uh, the trust fund investment return for 2023 was 13.8%. In 2022, this fund lost money, and I think all, all of the funds lost money in 2022, you know, including the towns. Um, the funded ratio uh, is 119%, which we like to keep that over 100%, which it is. Uh, as compared to 110 percent in 2022, so this fund, um, the Carmel Ambulance LOSAP fund, ha is doing well. So, I just basically want to the board to adopt this uh, report. Okay, and Carmel Fire Protection District Number Two, also, uh, this this fund has done well again in 2022. There was a loss of negative um, um, uh, 14.9 percent. The fund in 2023 has a, had a positive 16.1%. The funded ratio is 121% and, uh, 2000, as of January of 2024. So again, this, this fund is also doing well. Uh, we contribute to both Mayapack and Mayapack Falls, uh, the LOSAP programs. In 2024, we're going to be contributing $240,000. The, we always contribute more than what is recommended to keep in order to keep this funded ratio where it is. Okay, so we, we the, the requested um, amount that we're supposed to fund is only seventy six thousand, but we're, we always contribute more to keep that program running well. You know, 
funded well for the fire fighters, you know, that um, that serve our communities. So, um, so that's from Mayapac. Mayapac is, and then Mayapac Falls also is doing well. We had a loss in 2022 of 14.9%. Uh, that's when the economy really went went down, um, but it did turn around in 2023, and it was 16.1% investment return. So again, this one is doing well as well. Um, we are looking to contribute 260,000 for Mayapac Falls. So again, just need the board to accept these uh, reports. So, so in that meeting with uh, the commissioners of Mahopac, mm -hmm. they asked about funding the study. Um, Remember, they wanted us to, to look at the other LOSAP. Yeah. So I didn't know if it's possible. I don't know if that's possible that that at some point, you know, talk to the board about how much that is. And, and Yeah, I, and, I'd have to. Um, yeah, I just wanted you to. Talk to PenFlex about it. These yeah. reports are, are prepared um, from, Pen, from PenFlex. Um, I, I believe there was a reason when there may have to be like a, a vote that would have to take place, you know, well, it's going to be spending money, that, you know, yeah, to do the study. We but can we can look at it. Yeah, we could definitely. I can reach out to Penflex and. Uh, and yeah, I, it slipped my mind, and I remembered when I looked yep. at that that. Yeah. Oh yeah, they wanted the LOSAP to be looked okay. at. So, yeah, please do that. And I, we did reach out to them last year when they had requested it, and I, I don't know, Greg, if you remember the response either, but we we can look at, we can go over it again. Yeah, with that. Yeah. Thank you very much. Sure. Okay. Thank you. Um, so before we do public comments, we want to adjourn the uh, adjourn the work session, right? Oh, it doesn't matter. Public comments. Five minutes. Um, so in conclusion of everything that has happened here tonight, it is very alarming that we do not know the costs. Um, majority of the paperwork is incorrect, such as school district listed as Carmel. There are missing historical sites and scenic routes, wetlands, endangered species, forest fire regulations, etc. We have not heard from our firefighters, police, schools. We do not know what the long-lasting impacts are. Look at Duracell. Um, we are still cleaning that up 20 years later. That is not a lithium-ion battery. Does anyone know how many school buses would need to evacuate? I have the answers. However, what we have here has been taxation without representation, no clarity on the payment in lieu of taxes, the pilot program. Plans have not been shared. There has been insufficient community engagement for our concerns and feedback up until now, where we are being reactive and not proactive. We the people are counting on all board members elected officials and volunteers that sit on our boards to take proactive measures that are instrumental in changing the zoning laws to be reflective in the new finalized master plan to keep our children, your children, and children's children of all future generations, homes, businesses, land, community, environment, first responders, pets, water, landmarks, historical sites, safe. Thank you. Thank you very much for coming out. Alicia? I'm back. <laughs> um, all right. Um, first things first, I'm not going to drop the bomb just yet. That, that's at the very end. Um, so <laughs> a few things. I have like five things. I'll try to be super quick. I know it's late. I have work tomorrow. A teacher. I get it. Everybody has things to do. So first things first, I have a few questions and comments. Who is on the Environmental Conservation Board? I know who they are. What I meant by this question is, what are their qualifications, and do they know anything about wildlife and respecting Mother Earth? Um, number two, regarding the environmental protection um, uh, issues at hand here, the eastern box turtle does live on that best site. Just a heads up. So, and it is protected by federal law. Secondly, there is no Putnam County Historical Society. I forgot to mention that. It's listed in the master plan. It's the Putnam History Museum. Just clarification there. One other thing. Canceling personal meetings, not responding to emails or phone calls seems to have become a problem. 
I don't know what's going on. I get it that we're busy. But however, there is one major concern I have here tonight, actually two. Opening up personal mail. That is breaking federal law. If um, you would like to know more about this, that's what our main meeting was going to be about today. The Historical Society mail was open, and our bank statement was left open to the entire town that walks through here in our mailboxes, just stating that. And it clearly said the Historical Society. So I don't know who opened that, but just a heads up. Not so great. <laughs> Secondly, um, our Historical Society building update. It's been nine months. I'm trying to be patient, but board of trustee members of the Historical Society, including two here tonight and many more, all of our historical artifacts of the town are getting ruined at this point, just to clarify that. Um, I would like an update, because at this point, I don't know what's going on. I'm left in limbo. And last but not least, to say the least, there are new findings, historical findings, on the best property site. How do I know this? By just prior experience and talking to people who have hunted those grounds prior to um, the current owner owning that property. There are pictures and video recordings as well that I can give. How do I say this in the best way? It's a major concern. Um, history has been tending to repeat itself in this town. And not to try to get upset, I'm trying to keep my cool, um, but it's a historical site and the best property. Um, a county road runs through there, an old county road. It's identified by two stone walls. Secondly, we talked about water contamination tonight with the retention ponds literally behind some people's backyards that are here tonight, which is wrong, um, along with the best site. It's just wrong. I've said that before. But as well as that was the old Lonsbury farm. That's my extended family relatives. It holds historic significance, that area. They were major contributions to this town, and they left their mark here regarding history and all things. It is also a burial site of my family. I was told this many moons ago by an elder. Said, between Union Valley Road and Miller Road, there is a site to protect. I've held my cool, tried to keep this private, and only tried to talk to you, Supervisor Kazari, but every time something is getting canceled. This needs to be protected. I do not want to see the same thing happen over and over and over again. It is getting ridiculous, to say the least. We have learned, I hope we have learned by the building of the reservoirs, of what happened to my family and extended family members. But we need to do something about this. Just put a stop to it altogether and just protect that site and turn it into a historic site. I took it upon myself, since I had no help whatsoever regarding this matter, I called the state archaeologist, and we've been working together. I do have also a degree in archaeology, just to make that known, um, from Harvard. So regarding that matter, um, this just needs to be protected. And no, I did not trespass. Just a heads up, I had old pictures for it to show. OK, um, so those are just a few things um, regarding that. Please fix these problems. and. Thank you for listening to everyone tonight. At least I hope you listened. Thanks. Thank you for coming. Okay. If there are no other comments, um, the fifth annual prayer walk is Sunday, September 22nd, 1230 at Carmada Park, 226 Seminary Hill Road. Uh, I hope to see people there. It's uh, honoring um, Detective John Falcone, who was a Carmel um, resident and was uh, a member of our police department uh, before he went to Poughkeepsie and was tragically murdered. Our e-waste drop-off day is Saturday, October 26th, 9 to 12 on Mud Pond Road. Uh, that can be found on our website. Anybody else have comments? I, I, I had a couple things. <clears throat> yeah, I know that, yes. So um, I wanted to add something on the zoning code. So 156-36-28, um, which prohibits any new smoke or vape shops, I would like to add uh, the language, upon conviction of the sales of illicit substances, the certificate of occupancy for an existing non-conforming smoke and or vape shop shall be become null and void 
The building inspector shall notify the owner of the property and the tenant by notice places on the door and by certified mail of such revocation of certificate of occupancy. This decision may be appealed to the Zoning Board of Appeals. So I'd like to add that to the zoning code. And then um, two other things. We have a couple events coming up. September 26th and 27th, we have the Tunnel to Towers Mobile Museum coming into town. It will be rolling through uh, September 25th, Wednesday. Uh, it's getting off exit 9W um, by the Home Depot in Southeast at around 345. There's going to be a police escort into town, um, and we're going to set up around 430. Um, it will be open to Mayapak High School students from 9 to 2 on Thursday. Um, and then it will be open to first responders and their immediate family uh, that night from 4 to 7. Um, Friday we will follow the same itinerary, but it will be open to Carmel Central School uh, High School students. And then it will be open to the public. Um, if you've never seen it, you should come by. It's a moving um, memorial to the lives that were perished on that, on that dreadful day. Um, and then I will also be hosting a coat drive October 13th with, in conjunction with the Mayapak Fire Department. Uh, we're going to use it as a recruiting event as well. Um, we're going to have a car show. There will be vendors, um, food trucks. It's going to be a great day. Um, so October 13th, we'll be putting some stuff out. And my next Connect with Kearns will be in the hamlet of Carmel on October 5th from uh, 8 to 10 at Corner Spain Park. Um, and that's about it. I know it's a lot, but thank you. Uh, can we get a, we're going to be going to executive session about ARPA funds and yeah, speaking to the comptroller. Can I get a motion to go to executive so session? Moved. And a second? Second. second. Oh, all in favor? Aye. Aye.